you know, for television sport and anything, but, you know, Munster Championship was last year, all Ireland final was last year, this completely new year, it started in the 1st of January, and, um, you know, we're not a bit conscious of being, you know, champions of last year, or champions of 32 titles or whatever else, this is, this is a whole new ball game, and Limerick are certainly up for this match, and they don't mind whether we're up in pedestals or not, but they're trying to knock us off. You are missing, though, key players from last year's campaign. Well, again, I have to make the point, you know, I mean, you know, Cork won all Ireland in 66 and Phyllis retired and they won in 78, right, and three in a row and Phyllis retired and, you know, we're not looking backwards because we can't afford it. If we're going to be looking backwards and seeing, well, we're short this fella, short that fella, you know, you, you won't go anywhere. We have a new team. This is 2014. It necessitates a change in tactics because we're missing big men. And, you know, that, that, that is something that we haven't had over the years. But, you know, this is 2004, complete new championship, and that's the way we're looking at it. Conditions today, are you please? Well, it seems to be grand now. The forecast is for showers. Um, what that'll do to the game, I don't know, but the, the pitch looks very, very good. Slight breeze blowing down the, down the pitch. Um, you know, I don't think it will have too much of a bearing on it. Is home advantage an issue today? Well, I think home advantage is always an advantage. It's always worth a few points to, to, to a team. Also, the fact of like that the referee's put under a bit of pressure, you know, a few hometown decisions go his way, except when it's down in Parky Creeve. You know, but I mean, the situation is that, that we're, we're coming up, we know what we have to do. Uh, if we don't do it, it won't be our fault. We just mean that Limerick got a better team. Hadja Whelan, this is a big game for Limerick and a big game for you as well. Yeah, the first Munster game for me, like, you know, and looking forward to this for a long time. And it's great to be here now and look at the crowds around. A lot of Cork people here, you know. What about the three debutants you'll be introducing into this? It's very important how they play for you, isn't it? Yeah, it's first time for Mike McCain and John Paul and somebody, I know, Mike Kai, you know, it's a big game for the English. Like, we're, we're only five months at it at the moment, you know, so we've two months hurling, two months hurling behind us. So it's not a whole pile for, for, for a game like this, you know. Are you playing your chances down then? I oh, well, no, no one gives the chance. Like, to be fair about it. You know, you got, you got to be realistic about it. We haven't got a whole beer today. <laughs> Sir, obviously, you've been a bit facetious there at the end. It'll be, it'll be fairly serious and different stuff in the dressing room right now, though. Well, that's for sure. I don't just listen to that. Pedro is a wily old. He place. obviously thinks Cork have a television in the dressing room. Maybe they do. <laughs> well, he's right. There is a lot of Cork people around, and Cork are favourites. But like, this game is set up for Limerick. Yeah. They're going to tear into them, and they'll be hoping like, to set the standard early on. If the Limerick half back line midfield can get on top, this game can go either way. Yeah. Now, you've been taking a close look at the Limerick team for us. You talked to me earlier on about their half back line, their defence in general, and the half back line, how important that is. Yeah, like it's important to any team and like Mark Foley really is a benchmark for this Limerick team. I believe if Mark Foley plays well, the whole Limerick team plays well. Now there are times when he might be loose, but he's a great man under pressure and if he has a good game, along with Geary and Ali Moore and the two boys midfield, uh, Smith and Lawler, right, that's the triangle there that Limerick will be hoping to get on top of. It'll take the pressure off the full back and set up good ball to the forwards. Well, Mark Foley has been a good player for Limerick for, uh, for quite a number of years and still so important to them. Oh yeah, he's, he's a great player and very good, very good championship player as such. Like when he comes good, Limerick comes good. You can see him here in action now against Walford. Like he's usually very good on the ball, like good sidestep and right good strike when he gets gets trio. Here he's taking on trio for little hand pass away, ball gone. You know, again he catches a great ball here, walks out to the off field lads. You know, has a little look and hits a great ball to the forwards. He when he plays well now, he he ignites the whole team. Here he's again under pressure, putting across. Left and right, Michael. It doesn't matter to him. He's either both ways. Gets caught here under this one. Well, they're going to have to be careful down the middle because last year against Offaly, like they were porous down the middle. Like uh, Geary and Ryan got caught and Offaly walked through it again. They'll have to tighten up there. You can't allow people to walk down the centre. You have to block them by hook or by crook, really. Well, Ger Cork are out onto the field uh, behind us here, and obviously there's a lot of talent in this. What might have happened? So they come again. Yeah, well, they, they had a great run last year. Very fired up to win the All Ireland. Very disappointed they didn't win the All Ireland. Now they set into the league and they said they'd try and find some players to make up for the players they'd lost. Yeah. Alan Brown retired. So can't obviously gone of course. The amazing thing about it, Michael, is they didn't find many players. You know, Jerry O'Connor is really yeah. a direct replacement for Alan Brown, and Jonathan O'Callaghan a direct replacement for Sedan to help in. And Brian, Brian Murphy, who's cornerback today, is really only in there because Pat Mulcahy is injured. So they'll be disappointed in that, but they're really fired up for today. Just watching David O'Sullivan after coming out there, yeah. he's after doing a Davy Fitz. You know, he <laughs> tore down there. I, I've never seen him as fired up as he is yeah. today. But I, yeah. looking at that Cork defence, we'll just have a look here at the clip on it. The f there are six brilliant players. But there's a fault in the full back line that they all seem to play the ball. You know, you, in the full back line, you need somebody who's going to mind the house and lead it. Now, here they're cut out by John Milan in the Munster final, all ball watching. Now, one of them there should be calling the shots. Outside him, Milan is cleared through and buries it in the net. 
And again in the All Ireland semi final, you know, when, when Wexford drew them out, one man left inside, Paul Codd catches it over, no one there to, to, to mind the house. Now, with Satanta the gone, they're going to rely on these two big skits today, Ben O'Connor uh, and, and, of course, Joe Dean. These are the two men. Now, this was the score of the year last year. Look at the speed of Ben O'Connor. When he goes through that centre, his vision to lay it off to, to, to Joe Dean, yeah. the shot of Now, that was the score of the year last year. They'll be relying completely on those there because Niall McCarthy centre forward is a great worker, but he doesn't score that much. The other two, uh, uh, the other two forwards are new. Timmy McCarthy, we all know about Timmy. He do a few runs, he can be taken off. He, he's unpredictable, so they're very much reliant on those today. I think Cockham is good as they were last year. Yeah. I think they're vulnerable today. If Limerick had that fire in their belly to really tear into them, they could really test this Cockham today. Well, this indeed is that Limerick team that uh, all their supporters will be hoping that they have indeed got that fire in the belly for this big match. And why wouldn't they, of course, Sarah Carl? I mean, this is Monster Championship. This is what fellas want to play. Yeah, in. Pat and, bit. and as the two of you know, there's a lot of talent in this county. Not always used, maybe, to the best advantage sometimes. Well, it can be hard enough to step up from under-21 to senior, but like, they have won three or four senior All-Ireland titles, or under-21 titles. They have the talent there. And like, OK, Pat was playing it on, but I know from behind the scenes that Limerick are roaring for today. Mm -hmm. They have the pitch... A little bit, you know, it's, it's a look, beautiful pitch, maybe a little bit uh, sideline to me looks pushed in the small end. Yeah. You know, tighter, tighter. Yeah. you can't play and then they're playing at home. They're going to take every advantage. And as I like if they can hit Cork legally, put the pressure on, get their imposed their own will on the game early on, the more they can do that, they'll upset Cork a small bit. It's important that they don't let Cork into a rhythm where they can throw the ball around and do a little fix and touches. Now, as Jerry says, the Cork forwards are nice, but they're very, very small. Jerry and Ben O'Connor are light, draw Dean light. Like the two McCarthy's are good workers. They may not score that much to do a lot of do the donkey work, but like I expect. Limerick to be hitting very hard, getting fastball into their forwards. Like, and the Limerick forwards might not be that physically, but they are very, very fast, and you could get an upset in the cards here. OK, thank you for the moment. Now, a lot more big championship action taking place around the country this afternoon. News of Donegal against Antrim and Cavan's replay were down in just a moment. But for the people of Carlow, it's an especially big day. After their famous win over Longford, they now face the Leinster champions, Leash. Reporting from Dr Cullen Park in Carlow is Con Murphy. It's Carlo versus Leash at Dr. Cullen Park this afternoon. A straightforward win for the Leinster champions, you would have said. Although, Carlo, with that good win against Longford in the last round, and with a renewed confidence under Luke Dempsey, there will be no pushover here this afternoon. Now, I've been talking to the injured uh, Leash midfielder, Paul Clancy, just down the road at Knockbeg College, as they prepared for this afternoon's game. Uh, yeah, but we're sort of under pressure now as well, because people are going to be thinking that maybe we're a flash in the pan team, but sure, hopefully now the boys going out now today will do the job for us, like. The fact that Carlo have one game under their belts already, that will probably give them a bit of a boost going into the game. Yeah, it will stand to them. Last year, I think we had we had Wexford under our belts before we played Offaly, like, and it sort of stood with the second day we played Offaly. Like. But uh, Carlo had a great one again, Longford. Mikko and Declan Radden, they were very impressed with them. They're good midfield and good forwards. Like. So hopefully we're going to go out and give it a shot. Like. Is there extra pressure on you now as Leinster champions? I don't know. Like, Really, like, it's funny because last year like, we were going out and we were sort of like Carla. We were going into say, the Offaly game, the Dublin game as underdogs. No one thinking we were any good. Like, so there is a little bit of pressure maybe, but we're not really feeling it at the moment. Like, we're just concentrating. Everyone's totally focused on playing Carla like so there. So. And your own situation with the Tom Howes, the injury, any chance that you might come on at some stage today? I will see you on the bench anyway. And if Miko sees fit to bring me on, I'll go on anyway. So we might see Porrick Clancy on the field yet here this afternoon at Dr. Cullen Park. Ground is filling up nicely. It should be one or two showers this afternoon. They've certainly been forecast, but on the field, it promises to be quite an interesting game. Welcome to Bally Buffet here in the heart of County Donegal, where Donegal are hoping that the home tie here will help them to get through to the semi-final of the Ulster Championship. Anthony, they are the favourites. Deservedly so? Yeah, well, naturally enough, I think, you know, we should be favourites, like, but uh, we're playing at home. But in saying that, like, matches, you know, between ourselves and Anthem, like, over the past number of years have been very close. I think the most uh, would be three points at any time. And, mind you, we had some good teams here fielded against Anthem, and uh, we always found it a very, very tough, close match. Antrim have been coming good in recent times, but still it's a long thing to expect them to come and beat Donegal here in Bally Buffet. Yeah, that is true. Like, and uh, but but they're an improving side, and uh, PJ O'Hare's has worked hard with Anthem, and uh, I can see this match today being another close encounter. Well, let's hope so, and we'll have the highlights, of course, for you tonight from Bally Buffet in the Sunday game at 9:30. Two weeks ago in Cason Park, Belfast, Downing Cavan played out a very exciting draw in the Ulster Championship, and today here at Kingspan Berkeley Park, we're hoping for more of the same. 
in the replay. Well, with me now is the last Cavan captain to win an Ulster Championship. That's former midfielder Stephen King. Stephen, do you think it's going to be a close match today? Certainly, it'll be close. It'll be like all Ulster matches. It'll be very, very close. The last day I thought was a terrific game, actually, to be honest with you. And a, a, a draw was a great result. But Breffney Park, people say his home advantage is great. It's actually a new pitch to the Cavan players as well. So I think it'll all be on the day. And most championship matches in Ulster are determined on the day, really. Do you think Cavan possibly should have won to the day as they had numerical advantage for most of the second half? Possibly on the numerical advantage, we probably should have held out. But to be fairness to down, a, a draw at half was a fair result, you know. And how do you see today's game going? I feel like Cavan have, a, have six natural forwards now, you know, and I feel if we get the ball to the Cavan forwards, I think Cavan have a great chance of progressing the semi-final. OK, Stephen, thanks very much. Weather is a bit changeable here, plenty of showers, but um, we're hoping for a very good game. Throw-in is at 3.30. Yeah, Gary McDonough, star of Carroll Row, over in the West, of course, in his own time as a footballer. Of course, one of this year's favourites for the football championship. Galway are also in action today. They face London over in Royslip, and we'll have updates on their prog progress throughout the afternoon. Looking back at this hurling match, Cyril Farrell and Ger, um, Limerick have won 321 out rounds the last couple of years, but I was reading Ger Hegarty in the paper during the week, a former Limerick star, and said, look, never mind about what they might do in two or three years' time. Now is the time to do it. Well, they were in 2000, Michael, and those fellas are now 25, 26. Mm. If you don't win with fellas at 23, 24, 25, you're going nowhere. And as well as that, when you win in All Ireland, team that win in All Ireland, look at Kilkenny. They might have two or three under 21s, fellas that are already under 21. Yeah. Now, there's no use in complaining about the players that are not here today. Mm. Now is the beginning for Limerick. This is the panel they have. For whatever reason they're missing, the like of Stephen Lucy, Brian Bagley, Owen Foley, Party the Wire, the big cogs in those, in those wins, they are out of it for one reason or another. This is what they have. Today they've got to make a beginning. You know? the, reason, the reason they're out of it, Sir Farrell, of course, is this football and hurling divide in the county. Yeah, well, I could, there's a big debate about it. Personally, myself, if I was over a team, I'd have the best team out. Whether they played hurling or, or football or anything else, like Cockrell to do it. It's hard on a player and they're all saying they have to make decisions. They have. But like, if you, if you divide your time properly you kind of, and, and do the training properly, there's no doubt about it. No, they wouldn't be playing yeah. football today. Like, and uh, it's a big sacrifice to have to make. Okay, if they're, if, if they're able to win without them, they'd say they did the right thing. But like, I would love to have a best 15 out, 15 out whether they are playing football. Well, as Jerry said, I suppose it's not about the fellas that are not here, no, but the fellas no, that are here. No, no, yeah. that's the thing. And, and like, it's a great start. Like, Limerick have their been training like the mind Padre. they've been training he's there for the last nine or ten months you think he's only done for the last five days yeah. that he's talking yeah. and like they're ready for this game now so are Cork they lost all Ireland last year most people in Cork and the players themselves would believe that they should have won last year's all Ireland Cork have to deliver this year Munster title doesn't count this year for Cork Michael they have to win in all Ireland whereas if Limerick can even win a Munster title this year they look unless a success okay gentlemen we have a commercial break to take right now we're back after that with Cork and Limerick and the Munster Harding Championship here at the Gaelic Grounds so do stay with us Cock our favourites. But uh, we'll give it a go. Cock. Five points. That will be cock anyway. We always do. A bit over 80 at the minute, so we need to be calm about it. They're driving back up the cock road as fast as they came in. We'll see uh, probably Tipper Waterford in uh, Thurless on, on the 27th of June. We have more uh, management in, in, in the last number of years, so where do we start? You have more managers in RT. Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> it's more brilliant, but no fear of it. We know not fear us at all. Uh, I don't know, like, I mean, they're coming down here very confident. They shouldn't come down that confident, like, I mean, Limerick are always good in their own patch, like. So we have a good chance of winning out today. I don't know much tonight. Come on, Limerick, right? Come on, Limerick, come on. He's outside. It's got to be the clean, crisp king of beers. So where does he... You don't want to know. It's got to be Bud. This year, Sirius Black has escaped from Azkaban prison. Sorcery will be unleashed. A dark power will arise. It was a Dementor who was searching for Sirius Black. 
everything you expected. If you want to kill Harry, you'll have to kill us too. We'll be transformed. Only one would die tonight. Expecto Patronum! Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Well, it's been a long day. He needs a perfect drive here. What a lovely shot! Yeah! Who's the man? Forget your right guard. Let's start again. Start every day with an upward spray of new right guard total protection. Its time-released odor protection will never let you down, no matter when your day ends. Oh, that is brilliant! New right guard total yes. protection. Start right, end right. Don't miss the most terrifying live experience in the world. The unanimously acclaimed The Woman in Black at the Helix this summer. Come and see the newest range of classic and contemporary style bathroom suites at PJ Matthews Showrooms, Bally Simon Road, Limerick. Remember, nobody matches Matthews, the plumbing and heating specialists. On June 11th, you'll be asked to vote yes or no in a referendum to change the Constitution in relation to the right to be an Irish citizen. A yes vote will mean that people born in Ireland after the referendum will no longer have a constitutional right to Irish citizenship, unless, at the time of their birth, one of their parents is an Irish citizen. A no vote will mean that people born in Ireland will continue to have a constitutional right to be Irish citizens. For more information, check out the Referendum Commission booklet or visit refcom.ie and make sure you have your say on Referendum Day. Life is full of wonderful moments, but nothing will come close to you. Spending a minute with a million. Starting in tomorrow's Irish Sun, two of you will get the chance to see how many euro you can grab in the greatest minute of your life. Only in the Irish Sun. The new furniture centre, Watercourse Road, Cork. Super anniversary sale now on. One million euro stock to clear. Open seven days, Sunday 2 to 6. Car park at rear. Welcome back again. So the scene is set for the meeting of Cork and Limerick here at the Gaelic Grounds on the Ennis Road in Limerick. Cork have won the first match here today against Limerick. That was the Intermediate Championship. Limerick have won the toss for the senior game. They're going to play into the town goal. That means they're going to play with whatever little bit of a breeze we have here today. Sir, your final thoughts on this match? Yeah, well, Cork will be favourites, and I think Limerick did the right thing by when they won the toss to take the breeze. They tried to get on top and try to lead from the start. They need to build up confidence. If Cork start very well, they're, they're cocky enough anyway. Limerick want to put doubts in their minds. You'd have to say Cork should win it, but like I have a sneaky feeling that it could be in for a big shock. And your? Well, TJ Ryan said during the week that a start for Limerick would be if they played with real pride and passion today and played real monster championship hurling. They have the wind. I think they'll do that in the first half. The thing to really watch out for Michael is the display of the respective half-forward lines. Whichever half-forward line gets most possession for the puck outs, and both of them are weak now, whichever one that team will win. I expect that would be Cork. That experience from last year should tell them, but I think it will be a real struggle for them. That's the thoughts of our two panellists here in our studio. It's time for us now to hand over to our commentary team. First of all, we're going to say well done to Michael Dykeman, part of the backroom team for Offaly. Their big win over Leash last night. We'll be hearing from Michael in a moment. But first, it's good afternoon to Marty Morrissey. And thank you very much, Michael. It's a beautiful afternoon here at the Gaelic Grounds, or Park Nugale, as it's called now here in Limerick. And uh, it's for Pat Joe Wheelahan, who guided Bird to four All-Ireland Club titles. This is a very big day in his life. It's his first championship match in charge of Limerick. And this is the Shannon Siders starting 15. There are three championship debutants at left corner back is Croom's Mickey Cow, who wins his place based on impressive league performances. 
the other new boys are found in the attack at number 12 Mike McKenna and full forward John Paul Sheehan is expected to test the strength and character of a highly thought of court full back line the strongest area is undoubtedly the halfback trio of Ollie Moran, Brian Geary and Mark Foley and the team captain is full back TJ Ryan Yes, and indeed, TJ Ryan is the key man for Limerick, in my opinion, a, a player I greatly admire. He was corner forward in the 1994 All-Ireland winning team and made the move back to full-back in 2000. And I think he's been rock-solid for Limerick ever since. A wholehearted and committed player who gives it everything every time he goes out to the Limerick jersey. And I tell you, if Limerick had 15 of him out there today, they'd be, they'd be unbeatable. Last year's All-Ireland finalist Cork have the advantage of a workout against Kerry two weeks ago. Wayne Sherlock is the only change to the team as he returns from injury. Brian Murphy and Jonathan O'Callaghan debutants that afternoon retain their positions at corner back and corner forward respectively. Even without Satanto O'Halpine, Alan Brown and Papal Kai, it's a strong Cork side with the O'Connor twins, the McCarthys and Joe Dean up front looking particularly formidable. The central player for Cork is John Gardner, the midfielder. I think in the modern game with the long puckouts bypassing the middle of the field, he's the ideal player to have in that position. He's a super hurling brain, very athletic, and he's a super striker. If you watch the amount of long range points he picks off, it's unbelievable for a midfielder. And I think he has the win of, it, of any game in his hands. Last year in the Ireland final, he hit maybe five or six unfortunate wides, but on his day, he's lethal from the middle of the field. And if he has a good game today, Cork are well underway. The Liam Lynch Memorial Pipe Band from Anglesboro in South County Limerick. Uh, John Quan, the uh, Limerick footballer, that's his area here in uh, Limerick. They march the players of Cork and Limerick as we look at Donald O'Grady, the Cork manager, who normally wires up an earpiece to talk to somebody in the stand, and it varies. Sometimes it's Sean O'Leary, sometimes it's John Allen, and Cork is always very professionally prepared. Both teams, as we mentioned, lining out is selected, but we anticipate one vital move. That is the moving of Mark Foley from left half back, possibly to midfield. Peter Lawler going back there. When the Gaelic grounds were opened uh, here officially, Bank Holiday Monday a few weeks ago, that was the way the team lined up. I think that's possibly, Michael, the way they will start. Yeah, P Peter Lawler would have played all his hurling in the half back line for Limerick at under 21 level. He, he captained them to the last under 21 championship and he was playing centre back or wing back at all those matches. And maybe I'd say that uh, Sean O'Connor could probably start on full forward on Dermot O'Sullivan because o Dermot O'Sullivan looks very fired up out there today and Sean O'Connor has been around a while, he has a bit of experience, so I wouldn't be surprised to see him switching in there as well. Certainly the mood here in Limerick, uh, Michael, has changed over the last few weeks. Uh, Limerick played against Kilkenny here at the opening and then against Offaly and the mood seems to have been increasing. And amongst the supporters, only 8,000 tickets sold here at the Gaelic Grounds during the week. But as you can see from our picture and our camera from behind the Ennis Road end, this venue is fairly packed. Capacity crowd of 49,000. We don't quite have that, but we certainly have the region of 30 to 35. Cork people, I would say, judging by their colours, outnumbering the Limerick people here. But it's going to be a wonderful atmosphere at uh, the new Park Nogel. Cost of 12 million euros. There's a debt of 7 million. And certainly when you look around and see this magnificent ground here on the banks of the Shannon, you can certainly say that it's going to be a venue that all of Limerick people can be quite proud of. Now, Patrick Wilhelm might have been uh, playing down his team before the game, but remember, this is a man that guided uh, Offaly to three All-Ireland minors, Bird to seven county championships in Offaly and of course, four All-Ireland clubs. Is he just uh, fooling us all, Michael? <laughs> well, Pacho, Pacho's around a long time and he knows the game. I, I'd i say, you know, there's a great, there's probably an element of truth in what he said though, you know, Limerick, there's they haven't been going well over the last couple of years. A lot, lot of trouble last year in the camp, and again this year with the dual players. Match referee is Seamus Roach. This is his very first Monster Championship match from the Kilsheelan Kilcash Club in South County Tipperary. It's time in Park Nugail for our own event.
The sun is shining, the skies are blue. It's championship time here on the banks of the Shannon. Wonderful atmosphere. Cork have won six out of the last ten championship meetings, but Limerick can possibly be inspired by their famous victories in 94, 96 and 2001. This is a Limerick team that has changed managers four times in the last 12 years. Phil Bennett, Tom Ryan, Eamon Cregan and Dave Keane. Can Tatcho Whelan, the man from County Offaly, guide Limerick to a Munster hurling final for the first time since 2001? They didn't have a great league. Can they have a good championship? Match on in Park Nugail. First free. Referee waves play on, allows the advantage. Cork playing into the uh, Ennis Road end. Half blocked by Brian Geary. And that positional switch has happened. Mark Foley is at midfield. Peter Lawler at left half back. A chance for Ben O'Connor. Sends this to the wrong side of the pass. It is so important for Limerick to settle here. Yeah, it's vitally important. If you get off to a good start, see Sean O'Connor gone to centre forward there as well. And how will Cork cope without Satanto helping and Alan Brown? They're two physical men in the forward line, full forward line. They look very small inside there today. Puck out is aimed at the far side for Niall Morn, who has uh, interestingly switched positions. Still playing at uh, the half forward line, but at number 12. This ball dropping in, Donald Cusick underneath it. Good goalkeeping. Watch the slither all the way. Batted down by Ollie Moore. Played in the forward line in the past. Many feel he's better as a halfback. Clem Smith had stepped out over the line. And the ref, the umpire, or rather the linesman, also stated that the ball was over the line. So it's going to be a sideline ball here for Cork. Sean Ogo Halpine. Left half back from Nipirsic. Mike Donald O. Cusick uh, won an All Ireland minor title back in 1995. Jim Niall McCarthy gone to right half forward and Jerry O'Connor at centre forward, so there's changes all over the place. Sir. Wonderful catch by TJ Ryan. Hit by Timmy McCarthy after the ball had been cleared. And I can tell you off camera that Limerick are really fired up for this. There's a little bit of argy bargy going on. And the linesman here at this side is quick to avert any problems. The referee spotted it, but uh, it is going to be a free from where the ball landed, which is just inside the Cork 45-meter line. Great atmosphere here, Marty, and Limerick are really fired up. There's, there's actually been a couple of little exchanges off the ball, nothing major, but they're letting Cork lads know that they're here. Niall Morn with the first real opportunity for Limerick. The white flag is raised. Limerick are on the scoreboard. Comes from a great hurling tradition. His first cousins, of course, are Paul and uh, Owen Kelly, that play for Tipperary. And Ben O'Connor's at full forward and bringing TJ Ryan out to field. So the changes all over the Cork attack. Obviously trying to bring TJ Ryan out of position. And in an effort, of course, as well, to expose the two Limerick cornerbacks. Cork, a little bit of pressure here. Gathering is Wayne Sherlock. Out with six uh, weeks with a shoulder injury, ligaments. And he picked up in a championship club football match with St. Michael's. Under pressure here. Limerick chasing and harassing. Andrew Shocknessy. Great college's star with St. Coleman's from Moy. Cork clear their lines. Breaking ball, favours Mark Foley, Clem Smith sends it across. The first touch by Mike McKenna, not a good one. Picked up instead by Niall McCarthy. Free to Cork. This is the incident again. And the foul on the Cork number 11, Niall McCarthy. John Gardner with the free. Spreading it out towards the corner flag. Chasing after Jonathan O'Callaghan from the Castletown Roach Club in North County Cork. A little bit of niggling going on uh, between various players off the ball, Michael. Yeah, it's, it's, it's typical championship stuff. You know, the first 10 or 15 minutes you're going to have a bit of that, but there's nothing too unsavory. It's just a little bit of getting to know each other. Mickey O'Connell from Middleton. Spreading it across the face of the goal. 
first to react is T.J. Rye, captain from Gary Spillane for the first time in Limerick's history. A man from that club wears the captain's armband. Chasing after this is Ben O'Connor. Nice pickup. Corkman down injured is Mickey O'Connor. We continue on. O'Connor was fouled, and this is going to be a free for Cork. Second free of the match for the Leesiders. Down injured is uh, Mickey O'Connell, who picked up an injury in that uh, sequence of play. Seemed to be a shoulder problem. The referee Seamus Roach has halted play to make sure the two players involved are able to continue on. Looks, looks to be a blood injury. Bleeding fairly heavily from the head they're coming off. And Mickey O'Connell comes uh, out to the sideline to be uh, given medical attention by Dr. Con Murphy. Blood substitute coming on for Cork is uh, Paul Tierney from the Blackrock Club. And he takes his place at midfield. This is Joe Dean. And he too raises the white flag. Sides level in Limerick. Puck out by Albert Shanahan. Many people thought in Limerick that John Cahill might get the goalkeeping duties, but uh, Shanahan's long puck outs, I think, a factor in the final decision making process. Finally got the number one. Clem Smith being fouled here. Free to Limerick. I think Limerick are going to be very encouraged with the way they've started. You know, they're first to the ball in a lot of positions and playing very well. This is Niall Morton. Won a hearty cup with St. Flannan's College, drops this in, and it's connected! John Paul Sheehan, who will be taking credit, but Sean O'Connor had moved into the full forward line, and I have a sneaky feeling it was O'Connor that got the touch. The free by Morn, dropped in, connected beautifully by Sean O'Connor. Game on. Darren was sort of badly exposed there. He should have got under that ball and made sure of it. Another testing ball for O'Connor. Going back there is Brian Murphy. The umpire signals the ball wide. This ball dropped in. Just keep an eye on O'Connor. He connected superbly. Jeremy Sullivan is going to be very disappointed when he looks at that though. He completely missed the ball. In that area, the first thing you have to make sure you get your hurl to the ball. Breakdown was uh, by Brian Geary. Tom Kenny was fouled. Going to be a free for Cork. Former dual star from Grana. Very much uh, a player in form at the moment for both club and county. John Gardner from the Napiershi Club in the north side of Cork City dropping this one in. Albert Shanahan sees it all the way. Good call by the keeper. Limerick on fire in the early stages. Damien Rail. Sean Olgo Halpin. Cut out this time by Peter Lawler. Pumping it in long into Sean O'Connor again. Jimmy O'Sullivan. Wayne Sherlock comes across from right corner back despite the fact that he's wearing number four to centre back from St. Finbar's. Ronan Curran, two Limerick players, no calling, breaking ball, favours Timmy McCarthy. Is the error punished? Joe Dean is inside, the referee blows his whistle. And from where the ball landed, there was a foul on McCarthy as he delivered the ball, and TJ Ryan has now got involved with Jonathan O'Callaghan right in front of the referee. And the referee is consulting with his umpires. Jerry Hennebury and Peter Moore are the umpires. And called ashore here to the referee is the captain, TJ Ryan. He could well see red here. It's a yellow card. The replay will show the incident between Joe Dean and I think 
in all honesty and first instincts is TJ Ryan is very lucky to stay on the pitch. Yeah, I didn't didn't quite get it. But if you look, Brian Geary and Brian Geary and Ollie Moore clashed under the bomb ball. We're not going to see it here. Why the referee didn't play the advantage, I don't know there. Just see, can we see the incident here? Oh. There you have it. TJ Ryan should have been sent off. No question whatsoever, and that happened in front of the umpires. And if he hadn't, if he hadn't got a helmet on, he'd definitely be sent off. This is the thing that happens. Joe Dean with the free. Satisfied with a point. You know, you see this happening in hurling all the time. If a player has a helmet on in the face guard and he gets a strike in the head, generally it's on a yellow card. If he didn't have a helmet on, he'd get a straight red. Well, it was a very high challenge, and within the rules, TJ Ryan should now be going for an early shower. I agree. It'd be a huge loss. Puck out is a long one again. That's the reason why Albert Shanahan got the nod. Tom Kenny bursts away. Lovely skill. Slither stuck to the hurling. He's past the 65. He's still going. Timmy McCarthy to the right. Jerry O'Connor to the right, to the left. Ball drops in, and it's a waste. It goes off Albert Shanahan. And that was a bad call by the keeper because that ball was going harmlessly wide. But what a run by Tom Kenny. Well, we've had almost 11 minutes played, Michael Zeichen. Very enjoyable. Great. Uh, Hurl win started the match. 100% uh, commitment from everybody. Mickey O'Connell is uh, recovering from injury. Recovered, in fact, and uh, now takes his place back at midfield. The Limerick forwards will have to work harder. They're letting the cork backs out very easily. Here's a man who scored a goal and a point against Kerry in the opening rounds. Ben O'Connor. Floats that one over the bar. That's his first point. So Liberty's man, Albert Shanahan, aiming to find Niall Morn with his puck out, succeeds. Sent in low, Sean O'Connor was fouled by Dermot O'Sullivan. And you have to say in the first two balls that have gone in, O'Connor seems to have the better of O'Sullivan. And now we have an instant where there's a Limerick man gone down off the ball. And the referee wants to have a word with one of the Cork players, that's John Gardner, he's uh, called over. A lot of things happening off the ball, and it still is happening as the referee is having a word with John Gardner. And there's at least a yellow card on its way here for the Cork midfielder. Yellow card for the number eight. And Clem Smith, Clem Smith has got involved there again now. Clem has a habit of being hot-headed, and he's after, he definitely, there was a few hurls raised there. And the referee just has to take control. This is his first championship match, but the attitude of players is typical championship uh, fervour, but there's too much happening off the ball. And the yeah. referee just has to assert his authority here, and unless they concentrate on the game, players are going to be sent off. They will be sent off, and the linesmen have to help him here, and the umpires, you know, the ref can't see everything that's going on. It's his, it's his first game as well here. Linesman Aidan McSwivna from Dublin and Pat Moore from Waterford are the two people uh, running the line. And the referee has called uh, Clem Smith over correctly, I feel, because he was involved in that off-the-ball incident. That's another yellow card. Mark Foley's gone off there as, as well with a blood injury. John O'Grady is on for Limerick. As a blood substitute. And there's some hard pulling now. The next player who, who steps out right is going to get a red, no doubt about it. Dunnick Sheehan is the 15 for Limerick. Wayne Sherlock. This is big. John Paul Sheehan, the number 14. It's scrappy, it's untidy. But Limerick have possession. Sean O'Halpine, lovely interception. Under pressure from two Limerick hurlers. Lays it outside, far as Brian Murphy. Good play by the new boy from Bride Rovers from the Rackcormack area of North Country Court. Joe Dean, keeping away the challenge of TJ Ryan. Crossfield ball supplied by Ben O'Connor. Over towards his twin brother, Jerry. 
lashing it in high. Albert Shanahan watches this all the way. Joe Dean is there. And the ball is gone over the end line. Second wide of the afternoon for Cork. Meanwhile, down in the middle of the pitch, Mark Foley has returned to action and takes his place at midfield. Straight down the middle of puck out. Ronan Curran underneath it. His tussle with John Paul Shehan from Turner Fuller is going to be an interesting one. Nice play by Mickey Cahill. Nice skill. Laying it off as Peter Lawler. Wearing nine. Operating at seven. Donika Sheehan. Sean O'Connor. Cork survive once more. Battle here between Timmy McCarthy and Ollie Moore. Lending assistance is Ben O'Connor. Driving it in low towards Joe Dean. TJ Ryan. Tussling. Tackling. Back to Damien Rail. Rail survives the pressure. Gets it down for us, Andrew Shocknessy. And Shocknessy took it too quickly. Had time, in fact. And that's the second wide of the afternoon for Limerick. You know, if I was Pacho, I'd move Damien Reid out on Ben O'Connor and put TJ Ryan back in around the square. Ben O'Connor's pace is exploiting TJ when he's leaving a loose man inside. Yeah, at the moment, uh, Damien Rail is operating as a fullback. TJ Ryan being brought out around the half forward line, and there's trouble here for Limerick. That exposure is there. It's O'Callaghan. Tries to flick it across for his bit O'Connor. Peter Lawler manages to scramble it somewhere, but it comes to a cork man. That is Jerry O'Connor. High challenge. Referee allows the, the advantage, and the point is well taken. By centre half forward Niall McCarthy. And you have to give the referee credit there because it was a free. He acknowledged it, but he allowed the play to continue. Yeah, he did well there, but the game should settle down a bit now. Corker beginning to get on top around the half back line, middle of the field now, and you know they're creating the extra man in the forward line. They look like maybe there'll be a few goal chances before long. Level after 16 and a half minutes for the second time in this Munster Championship semi final. Tom Kenny. Lays it back to his colleague in the half-back line, Ronan Curran. Wonderful fielding by Jonathan O'Callaghan. And this time the referee gives him the free. Fourth free of the match for Cork. One of the features of the first half. Wonderful fielding here by Jonathan O'Callaghan. A smaller version of Satanta, but he's very lively early on. Caught a couple of good balls there now. And Mickey Cahill's his first championship game, you know, so he's, it's, it's not going to do his confidence any good. Confirmation of a yellow card for Peter Lawler as Ben O'Connor floats this one over the bar. It's his second. Albert Shanahan is aiming for John Paul Shehan with those puck outs. This time he finds last year's captain from Adair, Mark Foley. Runs all the way. Fires Andrew Shocknessy. Good defending by Wayne Sherlock. Breaking ball. Clem Smith. Just leaves it behind him as he does his hurley as well. Hits Jerry O'Connor a fair shoulder. To his twin brother Ben. Inside is Timmy McCarthy from Castle Lines. Gets it onto his good side. Good score. Cork playing with a little bit more confidence now. Good combination play here. And the finish was superb. It's Ben O'Connor who's causing all the problems. He's drifting away from TJ Ryan. He's playing 50 yards out the field. And Limerick will have to do something about it. Apart from the goal threat inside, he's creating havoc out the field as well. And I think they should move Damien really. It's more pace than TJ Ryan. Sideline ball at the far side. Given to Cork and to Tom Kenny. Here's an idea of the possession statistics uh, at the moment. 60% for Cork, 40% for Limerick. Let's see if that uh, information will change over 
this championship semi-final. At the moment, Cork have it again. Niall McCarthy. Great lockdown by Peter Lawler. McCarthy has it once more. Hand pass for Joe Dean. Half blocked. It comes to Lawler. Who gives it long. Tom Kenny. Was trying to give it a little touchback. Intercepted by Dunne Sheehan. Sean Ogo Halpin. First touch. Two leaving him down. This is picked up by Andrew Shock to say. Chance here for Limerick. David O'Sullivan got a head injury there as he tried to clear. And it's Sean Ogo Halpin that comes away with it. Fine clearance by the Napiercic man. TJ Rye, solid as a rock. Dropping this back down into a Sean O'Connor. O'Sullivan tussling for it. Needs the support of Ronan Curran. The centre half back is back there to try and sweep up anything that breaks loosely. St. Finbars and Black Rock Club men combining. Wayne Sherlock getting it down. Fires Niall McCarthy. Loses possession. Comes back to a hand man, Niall Morn. Morn drops this one in. And that's gone to the left and wide. Third wide of the match for Limerick. The Cork half back line are totally dominant at this stage, Marty. And you know, I think Limerick have to do something there. They're not winning any possession at all. They're getting out very easily, and there's long clearances. You know, they're, they're eventually going to. The referee won't allow that quick uh, puck out to continue. And there is a uh, blood substitute now required. Seemingly for Sean O'Connor. Is it Dermot O'Sullivan? Or Dermot O'Sullivan, I should yeah. say. And the referee is signalling to Dermot that he needs him to go off the pitch to get some medical attention. I think the helmet issue, you know, there's three blood subs already in the first 20 minutes of the game. Today. Keen O'Connor, who played a corner back for Cork against Kerry, is coming on. And he's going to take up uh, the responsibility of the fullback duties and immediately hits the shoulder on Sean O'Connor and they continue on to greet each other as Donald O'Cusick drops this down into the Limerick 45 metre line. Good work here by Mickey O'Connor. Prize Jonathan O'Callaghan, who's posing problems for Mickey Cal. That's the second time he's won the ball. The last time was up high. This one along the ground, so there is a problem there. Good work by O'Callaghan, who impressed as a right half forward more than a corner forward during the league. Remember, Mickey Cahill from Froom is making his championship debut here this afternoon. There's three frees now that uh, Jonathan Callan has won. Joe Dean going for his third point from a free here. familiar style that we're used to he just seemed to lose his footing there but managed to connect with the slither still reaches his target that's his third point well despite that Sean O'Connor goal after about 10 minutes of play you'd have to say that Cork seemed to be a little bit more settled perhaps this attack will gain some dividends Mike McKenna just hitting it a little bit too strong and really they should keep supplying the ball in towards uh, Sean O'Connor who seems to be dominating and uh, the fact that Dermot O'Sullivan has gone away for some medical attention it would be a wise move. Referee just wants players to come outside the 20 meter line for the puck out from Donald O'Cusick. Thus the delay. Mark Foley that's it down for as Niall Morn. Line ball. The challenge was a hefty shoulder. I wonder was it a frontal charge? I'm not too sure. Have to look at that one again. Tom Kenny going to take the uh, sideline. Here it is again. That seemed to be a shoulder, all right. Referee correct. Jonathan O'Callaghan has gone into the crowd. He connected beautifully. And he's lucky that uh, he didn't injure himself or indeed anybody else in his endeavours there to try and reach the slither. I'd say he'd be a good hurdler. <laughs> as well as hurdler. Sideline ball comes straight to Clem Smith. Needs the support of Peter Lawler. Nice pick up. Smith and Lawler. 
combining at midfield. Ali Moore. Blocked by Dunica by Andrew Shocknessy. This is Dunica Sheehan. Needs the support outside, perhaps. Goes it alone. And that's a very, very good score. Captain of the under-21 All-Ireland team in 2000. Did very well, had to work very hard, despite being well surrounded here, had options available, but had the confidence to tap it over the bar himself. Limerick, first to the ball, Mike McKenna. Andrew shot to see here. Mansman says no, the ball was gone out, and that's going to be a line ball for Cork. Andrew O'Shaughnessy is a superb hurler, he's, he's had a very quiet opening to the game. I know he's away in the cadet school in the course, so maybe he's not getting as much hurling as, as he has been in the past, but he's very quiet so far. Blocked again by Andrew O'Shaughnessy, or rather Sean O'Connor, and that's going to be a sideline ball. Scoring chances for Limerick, three out of six. Interesting. Nice cut by O'Halpi. Ollie Moore. Proving all the experts right in Limerick so far that uh, the half-back is his best position. Taking off is Mike McKenna. Nice scale. Oh, lovely scale. Four court players converge. McKenna still going. He's inside the large rectangle. He's trying to pass it back. Comes back outside. Where's Niall Moore? Difficult angle. Right across. Cusick saves at his near post. And the umpire signals a 65. What a wonderful run, though, by Mike McKenna. He is, remember, one of the three debutants. Scale, control. He knew exactly what he was doing, but Cork eventually had to converge on him and try and stop him in his tracks. Managed to get the ball back as far as Niall Moore. Yeah, there is gaps in the Cork attack. You know, the first goal showed up, but Lim Limerick, you know, it looked like they could, could have broken through for another goal or two there in the first 25 minutes. Be worrying for Cork down the centre. When you run a Cork, they don't seem to be defending very well. Niall Morn with the 65. It's tailing to the right and what? Fourth wide of the first half for Limerick. And Donald O'Grady certainly must be a little bit concerned at the moment uh, because uh, despite the fact that Cork are leading, uh, Limerick are really putting it up to the champions. Mark Foley, Mickey Connell, number nine, and eventually Limerick have it once more with Niall Moore. Lovely skill, has to use the short grip and the hurley, and the finish equals the work rate and the approach. Former St. Flannan's college star shows his class with his second point of the day. Cork have been using the short puck out of Jerry O'Connor as a tactic. He won the first one, and Ali Moran switched wings over onto him. And Ali has won the last two balls, he's done very well. A great score there from Niall Moran, a brother of Ali's. Clem Smith trying to switch the play again over towards Niall Moran. Referee gives the free to Cork this time, but I'm not too sure why, to be honest. Going to be taken by John Gardner. Some people feel that uh, John Gardner's best position is centre-back, but with the way Ronan Curran performed last season, there was never any doubt who was going to be the first-choice centre-back. TJ Ryan now seems to be back at uh, full-back and performing admirably. Mark Foley hitting this well. It's just, just centimetres to the wrong side of the post. It's a weakness in Mark Foley's game, Marty. You know, he was wing-back tends to hit those long balls without you know without looking any and you know that's no good sort of, Andrew Shoxy needs the ball played in front of him. And Patrick Wheelahan knows exactly what you're saying I think Michael because the quality of the ball that's going in is not great and they need to feed John Paul Sheehan who's now gone back in full forward. Sean O'Connor is now back in the 40 but they need to feed uh, players like Shocknessy and Sheehan with quality ball. Mickey Connell correctly a judge to have taken too many steps with the slither in his hand, so it's going to be a free for Limerick. 
Limerick are going to be by far the happier team. By far. They're still in the game. Draw a match at this stage. I'd say Patrick would have taken that and everybody in Limerick would have. Niall Morn with the free. Hits it solidly. The umpire raises the white flag. It's his third point of the evening. And so far, these sides have been level three times. First time after six minutes. Second time after 16 and a half. Third time level after 29 and a half. Picked up this time by Jerry O'Connor. Laid off inside towards his brother Ben. Unmarked inside is Danica O'Callaghan. But the ball seemed to just get stuck in the ground and Limerick have the time to recover. Damian Rea. Sean Ogo Halpin. Under pressure from Mark Foley. Down for Sean O'Connor. Lashing it in long. In towards Andrew Shocknessy's corner. It should be really in front of him rather than behind him. That ball half blocked by Andrew Shocknessy, but the umpire, or rather the linesman, this side, indicates that it is, in fact, a Limerick ball. There's definitely a Cork ball. The games can hinge on errors like that. That's a very bad mistake to make. Sure. He's clearly blocked down by Andrew O'Shaughnessy. But the point is, uh, Michael, again, the, the point that we've been talking about is the quality of the ball going in should be in front of the forwards, not behind them. Yeah, no pressure at all. Sometimes when you're under pressure back to field, you might have to deliver the ball anyway, but there was no pressure on there. should have went in in front of him. Mark Foley, good connection. It's there. Oh, stepped in the line. Somebody got a hurley to it. It's still on the small rectangle. Cork under pressure. Give it to Sullivan. It's pulsating. It's heart stopping. It's the Munster Championship semi final. Limerick, the no hopers, are putting it up to the Kingpins. Mark Foley just taking his eye off it slightly. Comes back to him again. Mickey Connell chasing. Tim Smith. Good work again by the big number six, Brian Geary. Kept in just about by Mike McKenna. Damon O'Sullivan. Clashing with John Paul Sheehan. John Gardner back there to help out his beleaguered defence. Mark Foley. Surrounded by Mickey O'Connell and Timmy McCarthy. Still falling. Makes an angle. Can he finish? It's sneaking to the wrong side of the post. Well, this was expected to be a runaway in some quarters, but I think Limerick are proving that they can be a good championship side. This was a chance here. It stopped on the line, and there was still moments Brian here Brian for Murphy. anxiety. It was Brian Murphy on the line, made a, number, made a great save there. Timon O'Sullivan eventually clearing. Right corner back, Brian Murphy. Requiring some attention after that sequence of play. It's only his second championship match. Of course, uh, Bride Rovers are a club that provided uh, Shawnee Barry in the past to the 1966 team. And of course, uh, is a wonderful club in the north side of Cork. The hand injury there. I'd say the ball struck him on the hand and he kept it out. But just shows you, a line ball that should have gone the other way could have been in the back of the net there. You know, a simple, simple mistake by the linesman, but it could have made a big difference to the game. John Lowe Cusick with the puck out. Three minutes of additional time going to be added on here in Park Nagel. Clem Smith, hungry for more. Laying it off for his Nile Moore. Contributor of three points in this opening half. This is under pressure. The umpires signal to each other. Limerick are in front. It's his fourth of the afternoon, but the Shannon Siders are growing in confidence. Yeah, the Limerick half forward and have really come into the game in the last ten minutes. And Nile Moore has scored two great points off Tom Kenny. Kenny is a lovely hurler, but maybe a little bit loose for, for wing back. A lot of lads in Cork might like to see him midfield. Comes down towards Ali Moore. Referee not allowing the challenge and not liking the challenge by Jerry O'Connor. Correctly so. This is going to be a free for Limerick. But this challenge, no doubt about it. (laughs) 
Holly Moore. One of the star performers in the league. High dropping ball, causing a few problems for Cork. Ronan Curran bringing in Brian Murphy into the play. Knocked down by Timmy McCarthy. Mark Foley. Tom Kenny and Ronan Curran combining. Comes back to the man who delivered the ball initially to send it right back in to the Cork half. Nice pick up here by John Paul Sheehan. He has support. Oh, great defending by O'Sullivan. Knocking it off the hurl. And it coming to Sean Ogohalpe. That's good play by Cork. TJ Ryan and Ben O'Connor. Ben O'Connor with the ball and the hurley. TJ without the hurley. Pass inside, intercepted by Ollie Moore. Going back to gather is Sean Ogohalpe. Good sturdy work by Andrew O'Shaughnessy. We haven't seen much of him, but this is a very skillful player. Getting inside, right corner back, Brian Murphy. O'Shaughnessy still holds possession. Two Cork players around him. And eventually, he overcarries, and it is a free out to Cork. But just in that sequence, you just saw just a sniff of the talent of Andrew O'Shaughnessy. This is wonderful defending here by Jim O'Sullivan. John Paul Sheehan, look at this, brilliant. Super defender, but John Paul should have shortened the grip in the hurdle and just tapped over a simple point, you know, five yards before that. Jim O'Sullivan was ten yards off and he let him close the gap. Twenty-six-year-old Jim O'Sullivan. Ali Moore. He deserved to get the benefit of the break there with that uh, attempted fielding that ball. Wins himself a free. This is uh, Limerick's sixth free of the game. Lim Cork are in big trouble under the puckouts. They've tried a few variations of char puckouts because any of the long ones, they, they have Brian Geary, Ollie Moore, P uh, Lawler, Smith and Foley are too powerful for them in the air. Ali Moore seemed to connect beautifully with it. It's dropping right under the crossbar. Donald Lokusik. Under pressure from Dunica Sheehan. Claimed by the referee to fouled the goalkeeper. So a free out to Cork. Two minutes of that injury time now played in this first half. Donald O'Cusick, first choice goalkeeper in Cork since uh, Jerk Cunningham retired in 1998. Great catch by Ollie Moore there again. Good defending by Brian Murphy. Trying to set up Timmy McCarthy. McCarthy's uh, effort at the first time pull ends on the line ball for Limerick. Cork are very disjointed looking, Marty. You know, they're, they're, Limerick's confidence is rising all the time now. And Cork, I don't know, they don't look to have the belly for the battle. Well, they said here in Limerick all week that if they could survive the first 10 or 15 minutes and hold Cork, and if Limerick found their rhythm, they have the players, they have the talent. Remember, they have 321 All-Irelands behind them. So uh, all they need to do is gain a little bit of confidence. Dermot O'Sullivan batting it down for his Tom Kenny. Doesn't gather the first time. Picked up by Niall Morn. Good recovery by Tom Kenny, who then messes it all up. Morn again. Nice skill. Nice flick. Sends it in low. Danica Sheehan not quite expecting it. Brian Murphy operating well now at left corner back to Tom Kenny, to Wayne Sherlock. And the referee blows the half-time whistle after 38 minutes of play. Plenty of talking points, plenty of pulsating championship action. The Munster champions in a spot of bother in this opening half. Limerick's fervour and passion playing in front of their home crowd here on Park Vale inspired by the tactical awareness of one patch of wheelhead he's done it in the past you just get the feeling that he could be doing it in the future Limerick playing like they didn't play well in the league they certainly have played well in the opening half of this monster championship semi-final half-time score here in Park Nogale is Limerick one goal and five points Cork seven points one point between the teams let's go down to the sideline for some halftime reaction and join our sideline reporter Tony O'Donoghue Damien Quigley Limerick selector you must be very pleased with the application and the intensity that you're getting from your team 
Yeah, Tony, but to be honest, we'd have expected that uh, as a matter of course. Um, we got a good start early on, got an early goal, and to be fair, after that, Cork, I think, got on top for quite a period, and we've come back a little bit. But the wind is a big factor, and to be honest, we probably should be a bit further ahead, considering the bit of ball we've had in the full forward line, you know? You were written off all week, though, and that you're still very much in this contest, and you must be pleased. Yeah, we were written off outside of our camp, but um, we have a good bunch of players, and they're applying themselves properly, and we're hoping for the second half. John Allen joins me as well. John Corker in a bit of trouble. Well, you know, we, we got a bad start, a goal in the first few minutes, like put us back in our heels, but we came back into the game big time. And then, we, you know, we've played badly in the past probably 10 minutes or half hour and haven't been winning enough ball. But I wouldn't say, you know, that we're in trouble in any way, like we're down a point, we're playing with the wind. We're not playing particularly badly as such, uh, but obviously it's all to do. Will you make changes? Uh, I don't know, we have to discuss that now, Tony. OK, thanks very much, John. In the meantime, it's back to Michael. Tony, thank you very much indeed. Cyril Farrell, the reception that the Limerick team got at the end of that half really says it all. They're behind this team. This team is playing well. They're leading by a point. Yeah, they're taking the game to Cork, which they had to do, Michael, and they're giving it a good shot. It's real Munster Championship hurling. Top for a while, the referee was definitely kind of, it was going to get, get overflow on him because he wasn't really strict early on. Limerick are lucky to have 15 men on the field. They are playing very, very well, but Cork are only a pint behind and they have a nice breeze. There's quite capable of picking off lovely scores. It's still anyone's game, but Cork would still be favourites. Anyone's game, but nonetheless, the Limerick supporters have to be happy with what they saw Gerlach now in the first half. Well, Michael, the story of the first half is Cork are really lucky to be just a point behind. They should be down eight or nine points by now. They've been cleaned out at midfield. That half forward line is non existent in the last 20 minutes. Limerick own the possession, as well as that, they're fighting with real pride and passion. And what a second half we're going to have. It's Munster Championship hurling, sure I tell you. And then sure we're is. up here, not down there. Uh, I wouldn't mind being down there either. <laughs> I know you wouldn't. You were down there. You were one of the toughest down there as well as you were at it. All right, gentlemen, we have a commercial break coming up right now. We're back after that with more analysis on today's Monster Hurling Championship last year in Limerick. Stay with us. Lead by a point, it's 1 5 to 7 at half time against Cork in this Munster semi final. I have to say, we'll talk about the, the various merits of the two teams in a moment, but I really enjoyed that first half, sir. Well, it was Munster Hurling at its best, like, and you know, someone passed the comment, there was plenty of blood flying as well, like, there were only blood substitutes as such, but like, it looked like getting out of hand for a while. Limerick up to ante, they had to Michael to have a chance, there was no playing pain, little tippy stappy, tappy yeah. stuff for Cork to kind of show off their skills. They got in, made it physical, and they took the game to, to Cork. Lost their way half through it, came right back on top again in the last 10 minutes, but like, Cork are going to have to win the puck outs. They're not going to win every puck out by little place and little ball, they have to have someone to battle for it. To me, to be Niall McCarthy go back in centre forward and win the ball in the air. Must say a great setting for this match here today and uh, we must compliment the stadium, this new look uh, Gaelic grounds here on the Ennis Road, Ger, you played here a lot of times, it didn't look like this over it the It never year. looked like this Michael and you, if you see the seating at the far side of the field you can see it out the window here the people are up above the pitch, they're looking down on it, very like Parky Keeve and that, that creates a kind of a coliseum effect so that you see all the action, you're close to all the action and you feel all the atmosphere fantastic setting brilliant atmosphere here Limerick supporters in full voice you know this is the monster championship well the first major act in the coliseum was the Limerick goal that really got things going for them and this was a tonic for the troops they needed a good start they got it yeah they needed this they won the toss mike and they took the breeze and the win for broke this ball goes in high jim the won't be that happy he was right you'll see it he goes right you know it's a long ball coming in sean will get sean o'connor gets up and gets a flick there's, there's nothing going on with can do about it uh, Jim will be, won't, won't be too happy with you. You can see it lobbing in here. Just an overhead flick, nothing you can do in the back of the net. Like, you know, can't blame the goalie, but Jim will be unhappy with himself for not getting the block on that. I ball. think so. He's actually too wild up for today, yeah, Damon O'Sullivan. Very wild coming to the ball, just coming and slashing at it, not that, playing safe. That's a surprise I know, it's a, yeah, I know that, that's the usual <laughs> way he plays. Yeah. Even wilder than usual today. And it's the yeah. two cornerbacks by Murphy and Wayne Sherlock that are bailing Cork out in the full back line because there's massive pressure on that full back line. Mind you, the sun is shining down, that's where it was for the first half into there, the Cork defender's eyes. So that might have been a factor in it as well. And, and the wind is there as well, Mike. And the wind is there, there, there as well. You know, there's a fresh yeah. breeze down yeah. the field as well. But, but having said that, as we said, Limerick got the start, they wanted their point up. The point that put them into the lead came from Niall Morden. He's made his contribution, two points from play, two from freeze, and he's played well. Yeah, he's played a great first half, Mike, and I'd say at times uh, Cork would probably think it would take off Tom Kinney, because this Niall Morden, like, he, he's on song all through, like, here he goes, you're going to see him getting a hand pass here, like, putting through. And he gets on his left, favourite left side eventually and gets this ball over the bar. No, he doesn't first touch isn't that hectic, but he eventually comes on to it again. Hardman, good, good hard grafter. And his brother Ollie as well in the half back line. That half back line are getting on top in the last ten minutes. Himself yeah. and Geary, Matt Foley's having a great game as well. But it's how they're going to play the second half. Because 
Judging by the first intermediate game, there's a nice breeze there and definitely it's favourite team playing into the town goal. We'd be surprised there in the second half if Tom Kenny went to the midfield and John Gardner yeah. went to wing, wing back, like right, they did yes, in the All-Ireland yeah, last yeah, year, because yeah. neither of them are playing well. Tom Kenny's in real trouble uh, uh, at wing back, so that's a very likely switch for the second half of Cork. One very important player for Limerick, their fullback, their captain TJ Ryan. He's a mighty player, but he's lucky to have played 35 minutes or plus in this game. He could have been sent off. Yeah, well, he was wired up. It bound to me. He's going to lead from the front. He was brought out to play far, but you see this in here. Now, not alone, he dumps Jordy in here. The ball breaks away. Now you see here, jumps at the Otis at this stage. Green but look at this. Yeah, yeah, straight into the face. Yeah. Like, that really is a sending off offence. You're careful of the that. referee as well. Front of the referee, and there it is again. If you hadn't the helmet on, you know, he'd be losing, he'd be well caught or a two to two gone. Like, he's very lucky to be on. Referee, I felt early on, was losing control. But now he's got back on, on the good books again, but he wants to be careful. You can't have that happen, really. Yeah. The curious thing about that was, I was watching the referee. He blew the whistle for the free on Jordine, and he was looking at his umpires. You know, Jordine went down, he got up, and he was still looking at the umpires. Right. And he, even after the incident, he still contacted, he uh, consulted uh, the umpire. Whether he actually saw it properly or not, I don't know, because if he did see it properly, he really bailed out because that was a sending off offence. I know TJ Ryan's a great player and all that, but he should have gone for that tackle. Fact of the matter is, TJ Ryan is on the field. They were lead by a point. We have the second half coming up right after this break. We're coming up in just a moment. First, a little bit of news from other uh, matches around the country, and in particular, the game down in Carlo between Carlo and the Leicester, Leicester football champions, Leash. Jim Carney has the latest from there. Two minutes into injury time in the first half. Two minutes into injury time in the first half. And Leash are the leaders here by seven points to 1-1. A cracking goal for Carlo in the 14th minute of the game. It was scored by Brian Kelly. He's in from the start instead of the injured Brian Carberry. But other than that, it's been a very disappointing first half for Carlo. They've had seven wides. Their shooting has really been very, very poor. And even a couple of frees by the normally utterly dependable Simon Ray. Not alone have they been pulled wide, but they've been pulled wide on his own side. Uh, a, a, a ploy as well of playing a one-man full forward line at times, a two-man full forward line at times, that hasn't worked either. But the feature of the first half has been the outstanding display given by Noel Garvin at midfield for Leash with excellent backup from Kevin Fitzpatrick, his partner there. Garvin has dominated completely in the air in this first half. He has given an exhibition and with all the quality ball that's been going up, Leash have picked off a string of great points and they lead now by seven points to 1-1. Jim, thank you very much indeed. Team's not back out yet here at the Gaelic Grounds in Limerick for the second half of this Munster Hurling Stanley final. Who's going to win it now, sir, if ours? Well, Limerick will be happy at halftime, but I still have the feeling if you're a betting manager, it's a cocker in a stronger position. They're only a pint behind, there's a nice breeze in it. Their half forward line hasn't played well at all. I think they'll have to put Niall McCarthy back into the forward to graph for ball. The two Connors could come into the game big time. Yungo Callan is having a good game full forward. They are, they're very slick forwards. If they get enough of ball, they still win. Yeah, this is the thing about Cork, isn't it, Gerlach Nan? They toodle around sometimes, they tap around it, and then all of a sudden, you discover you're seven points down against them. Well, you could. There were a few uh, occasions there in the first half when Jonathan Callan got two great chances of going through, didn't finish it off. But at the same time, Michael, this is Limerick's game for the winning. They're completely on top all over the field. Very curious, the difference in tactics between the two teams. Limerick are playing that full forward line almost in the end line, and that half forward line about 60 yards out. And they're leaving this massive gap between the two lines, and they're exploiting that space between the two gaps. Mm -hmm. Now, what Cork are doing is, Jordine is the only one left inside the full, full forward line. All the rest of them are going out the field. They've been beaten in the air. It's a ridiculous tactic. So everything is working well for Limerick. Yeah. I tell you, if they keep up the pace, the intensity, and above all, they're preventing the, Lim uh, the, the Cork defence from clearing good ball over their half forward line to their full forward line. If they keep that up, they'll win the game. They will, but occasionally in the first half we got glimpses of what Cork Car can do, what they can do simply and cutely and very well. Timmy McCarthy's point, you know, all these nice little moves that they're so good at when they're in the humour. Yeah, but you're, I, don't, I think you're, the, the breeze is not to do it. Yeah. The Cork will play in deep out because against a strong breeze. You're going to find in the second half that the Cork through four line will play inside. That breeze is stronger than you think, and if they get a good supply in, they'll be very, very dangerous. They won't be as deep. You'll find that this half, the, the Limerick full forward line might have to come out because I, we're up fairly high here. I have a feeling down at ground level that breeze is a bit stronger than we think. Right, Cork team back out. We saw Jordan O'Grady there, Jim O'Sullivan, of course, the big strong man at full back. Here come Limerick. So it's going to be a fascinating second half, gentlemen. We're going to sit back and we're going to enjoy it. Hope you do at home as well. Let's go back again to Michael Dragnan and Marty Morrissey. Thank you very much, Michael. Welcome back here uh, to Clark Nagale, and uh, we're looking forward to the second half as well. No obvious uh, changes that I can see, no uh, substitutes introduced at half time. 
Uh, but the factor that uh, Cyril highlighted there about the wind, yes, it was quite breezy, actually, uh, when I was on the pitch before the start of the match. But you look at the flags, Michael, and they just seem to be quite still. Yeah, it looks pretty calm down there. You know, um, John Allen commented at halftime that uh, Cork would have to breeze in the second half, so obviously there is a bit of a breeze mm. down there. Just interesting at halftime there, Marty, the substitutes from both teams weren't allowed out onto the pitch for a puck round. I think that's ridiculous. We have concerts and everything on GA pitches all over the country, and then in a championship game like today, the subs have to tip around the tarmac at them in front of the stand. Well, there's no uh, introduction for any of the substitutes. It's a day for uh, ice cream and uh, cold drinks, and it's a day for passionate hurling and a place in the Munster final. Limerick, can they get into that uh, final on the 27th of June for the first time since 2001? This is uh, Dunica Sheehan. Laying it off to nine more. Score of four first half points. But this one well wide. Seven wides for Limerick. Don Low Cusick to his fullback, Dumit O'Sullivan. Second tap time that ploy has been uh, worked. This is Joe Dean. Lovely skill looking around. Didn't really quite connect. Limerick exposed here, but good defending by Brian Geary. Down fires Clem Smith. Laying it off to Peter Lawler, who has the time to look around. Tries to send it over towards Andrew Shocknessy's corner. Mike McKenna. Nice rob by Sean Ogohalti. Good hurler to Ronan Kerr. Floating this one in. Ollie Morton comes in from right half back. Anticipates well. He's well surrounded, however. Took a little bit too much out of it. This is Mickey O'Connor. Available to his right and left is Ben O'Connor and Jerry O'Connor. This is O'Connor, Ben, and that is gone to the left and right. It was actually Ollie Moore in the last that, that took the ball in the square, and then he followed up another great catch out to Philly. He's having a super game for Limerick today. Mickey Cahill from Prume, left corner back, just requiring some medical attention. And an under-21 All-Ireland, uh, like so many of these uh, players here in Limerick. Uh, his All-Ireland was won in 2002. And a very good league campaign. And Patrick Whelan had enough faith in him to uh, put him in at cornerback for his first championship outing. Long puck out by Albert Shanahan. Kicking it away there was John Gardner. Niall McCarthy. Surrounded. McCarthy team to have been taking too many steps. And it's going to be a free for Limerick. Niall McCarthy overcarrying the ball. Adonna McSwiven at the linesman and uh, of course the referee just indicating to Mark Foley where this free should be taken. Spreading it over towards Andrew Shocknessy. Out towards the corner flag. Did very well to keep it in. Not quite. Linesman at the far side has his flag raised. And that's going to be a cork ball. Almost in by the corner flag. Twenty-seven year old Sean Ogo Halpine has Dermot O'Sullivan available. Down towards Timmy McCarthy. Intercepting Mike McKenna. O'Sullivan. Great warrior. Great full back. Manages to get it out far as Jerry O'Connor, who's surrounded by three Limerick players. John Paul Sheehan. Delivery, not a good one. Easily intercepted by Ronan Kerr. Kerr, with possession. Nice stick work by Ben O'Connor. Brian Geary comes across to meet him. Cam Smith comes in to intercept. Uses the hand pass. Far as Peter Lawler. Under pressure from Timmy McCarthy. Referee blows his whistle for a foul on the left half forward. For a court. 
just outside the Limerick 65. Cork player down injured at the far side of the field. Looks like Mickey O'Connell again. And Mickey has been in the wars uh, earlier. Midfield, of course, in the All-Ireland winning team in 1999. And some people would feel that uh, he's probably better working around the 40 and around midfield than any place else. Scored two points against Kerry, and a player that I believe is uh, coming back to his best just at the moment. So some medical attention required for the Cork midfielder. Perhaps a change required here. Mickey, uh, knowing Mickey, he won't give up uh, very easily. Great hearted player. And he goes back in around the centre of the pitch. Well, Ben O'Connor has scored two first half points. This literally on the 65 metre line. And the referee Seamus Roach not allowing those extra few metres and wants it outside the Limerick 65. And ben O'Connor in no rush. Experienced player now at this stage. Won an All-Ireland club on St. Patrick's Day with his club, Newtown Shandrum. This one drops in and it's gone all the way. Albert Shanahan lost it in flight under the crossbar and Cork are in front six minutes played in the second half this is the ball that went straight through didn't even touch his fingers and Cork are back in business Ben O'Connor scoring the goal that brings Cork very much back into this game. Now, how will Limerick react to that terrible blow, that an easy concession of a goal from literally what was a 65-metre free? Albert Shanahan lost it completely. Well, Marty, I just noticed TJ Ryan when that free was being taken. He was standing about 40 yards from the goals. He's the man marking Ben O'Connor. I felt before the free was taken, he should have gone back on the line. You know, use your extra man, be back in the line, and TJ be very sure under a ball like that. Here's another free from Ben O'Connor. Gives it extra elevation, and the result is another point. Goal and three points now, Ben O'Connor has contributed. And Cork now enjoy a three-point advantage. This is Niall Moore. Trying to get it inside. But Cork now, boosted by that surprise goal. Possession given away. Lawler to Mark Foley. Ben O'Connor was the player coming into challenge. Cleared by Wayne Sherlock over to the far side. Joe Dean, look how far out he is from his own position. Picked up, however, by Brian Geary. TJ Ryan is available. Sends it across field to Peter Lawler, who gets there ahead of Tom Kenny. Lawler sending it in low. Nicely picked up by Sean O'Connor. Goal score in the first half. His jersey is called, and this is a free for Limerick in front of the post. This is O'Connor going through. Look at this. Has to be a yellow book, a yellow card, a booking for Ronan Curran. Yellow card for Ronan Curran. Let's get on to the sideline for some news from Tony O'Donoghue. Well, just before the Cork goal there, Brian Corcoran was told he was about to join the fray. His spare hurlies even were put into the sideline, and he did warm up, but he is due to be introduced by Cork very shortly indeed. And what a welcome he will receive if he is introduced by Donald O'Grady, former hurler of the year, out of action for three years. Meanwhile, Limerick's Niall Morn, satisfied to belt this over the bar for his fifth point of the afternoon. A good response by Limerick to the goal because their character is going to be tested now. They need to get the next score or two or else Cork could pull away from them. Yeah. 
Donald Oak Cusick puck out, glance over the far side. Breaking ball. Picked up by Tom Kenny. And that's going to be a free for Cork. Tom Kenny has gone to the middle of the field and John Gardner at wing back. It gives, I think it gives Cork more balance, a more, more settled looking team. This is the point I was making earlier. A lot of people in Cork are quite adamant, quite passionate that Gardner is a better halfback than a midfielder. And, and the same with Tom Kenny in the middle yeah. of the field. Donald O'Grady has gone down to his goalkeeper for obviously some strategic information as we look at Ben O'Connor taking the free and consistent as always. It's a goal and four points now for Ben O'Connor. Cork re-established their three-point advantage. Well, what are Limerick made of? The champions have restored their superiority. This is Clem Smith. Passing it outside, was aimed at Sean O'Connor, but picked up instead by Dunica Sheehan. Used a short grip, that's not a bad ball at all. Dropped by Dermot O'Sullivan. Picked up by John Paul Sheehan, and that's over the bar. Good work by the full forwards, making his debut after a wonderful league campaign from West Limerick. Working hard here, making an angle and scoring a valuable point. Holly Moore tussling with Niall McCarthy, who's been moved out to left half forward. Referee going to give a throw ball, I think, here. Damien Rail and uh, Brian Geary also seem to have changed positions. Damien Rail started a corner back, now seems to be operating at centre half back. TJ Ryan. Just taking a little bit too much out of it. It comes to Joe Dean, who's flattened by Damien Rail. And that's going to be a free and a probable booking for the cornerback. And an opportunity for Cork to stretch their lead. This is the challenge by Rail. No question whatsoever. Silly thing to do, really. Rail is back in the corner, Joe Dean. Ollie Moran is not centre back. Brian Geary, right half back. And Peter Lawler on the other wing. There's the scores from free statistics. 8 out of 11 for Cork. As Ben O'Connor hits this the conviction. It's a crucial time of the match, particularly from a Limerick perspective. The champions you would expect to be in front. The challengers now have to see what exactly is in the tank. Chasing after this one is Ben O'Connor. TJ Ryan standing firm. Oh, nice work by the defender. Looks like he had it in his hand for a moment, and it's all fall down. And the referee is going to give a throw ball. Comes out to the 20-meter line. Hard pull by Mickey O'Connell. Equally good pull by Clem Smith. John Gardner's hurley is broken. Mark Foley comes in. Oh, good pull by Dunica Sheehan. Ground hurling. Can't beat it when it's played at its best. Over towards Andrew Shocknessy. Has the ability to take on his direct opponent, Brian Murphy. The referee claims he had taken too many turns, and that is a free for Limerick. And Andrew Shocknessy has been inclined all afternoon to take a little bit too much out of it, Michael. Yeah, a couple of balls that he got. I think, well, I think that was a bit harsh there, though, having said that. He was just trying to get away from his man. But he's a very, he, he doesn't look as sharp. Over the last couple of years, he's been an outstanding prospect, and he just doesn't look as sharp as normal today. Jim O'Sullivan. Twice an all star. Hitting this with power down towards O'Callaghan, Jonathan O'Callaghan. Picked up instead by Timmy McCarthy. Back to Jerry O'Connor, and the umpire signals that it's bang on target. Great point, and it's Jerry O'Connor's first point in this Munster Championship semi-final. Four points between the teams. Cork gaining confidence as time progresses. Well gathered by John Gardner. 
That's the quality ball that Limerick needed in the first half. If I can use that comparison, the ball in front of the forward, Joe Dean, under pressure from Damien Rayle. Ah, oh, that's a magnificent point by Joe Dean. It's his fourth of this championship semi-final. Damien Rayle did everything right, but Dean had the class. The puck out is quickly taken. Sent back to Niall McCarthy, and that is over the bar. In the space of 60 seconds, Cork transformed the match. Yeah, Albert Shannon tried a quick puck out there, suicidal, and Cork now just looked, looked at moved up the gear and they're pulling away from Limerick. For the first time, six points between the teams. Sean O'Connor laying it in front of Clem Smith. Mickey O'Connell continues to work hard at midfield, sending it back up towards Jonathan O'Callaghan. With him, Mickey Cahill. This is O'Callaghan. Loves to run at defenders. Still has possession. Tries to get it back for his Ben O'Connor. Comes all the way back for his Timmy McCarthy. McCarthy steadies but sends it wide. Incredibly, uh, that's only Cork's fourth wide of the match. This is the time for composure, for cooling matters down and just... Uh, not panicking on the part of Limerick if they're going to upset the trend of this game as Cork now begin to dominate. John Gardner switched to right half back. Now the man in possession. Certainly seems to have given a little bit more stability with the arrival of Tom Kenny at center field. TJ Ryan almost hooked. Hefty challenge as Mickey O'Connell bravely goes in. O'Connell back on his feet. Picked up by Timmy McCarthy. Come as far as Ollie Moore. Floating this one in. Good reading of the game again by Wayne Sherlock. Knocked on by Lawler to Mark Foley. Floating this one in again. This is Andrew Shocknessy. Better ball. Doesn't gather it first time. Things not quite going well for the right corner back from Kilmala. This is John Paul Sheehan. Jim O'Sullivan. Good defending by the man from Klein. Cleared by Ronan Curran. Down fires Ben O'Connor. Willing to run at the Limerick defence. Steps by TJ Ryan. Flicks it inside. Fires Niall McCarthy. There are players available. There are three of them unmarked in the middle. Here's one of them. Tom Kenny. Steadies. Shoots. And off the post and watch. Limerick at this moment in time in trouble. Uh, that, that switch with John Gardner and Tom Kenny is making all the difference. John Gardner is getting under every puck out now and playing lovely diagonal ball into the corners. It's very difficult for the, to defend against. Fine puck out again by Albert Shanahan. Good ball in for Stanika Sheehan. Not defending again by Wayne Sherlock. Great play. Wonderful call by John Gardner. Coming forward is Ollie Moore, now playing at centre back. Well hooked by Jerry O'Connor. Needs the assistance of Brian Geary. Flicks it on far as Niall Moore. Available if he needs him. And he does. Is Mike McKenna. Sheehan. Back to McKenna. This one is just going to the left and right. Puck out quickly taken, but the referee. And blown his whistle because Cork are introducing a substitute. And the response is, of course, from the crowd because one Brian Corcoran is being introduced. What a welcome for the former Hurler of the Year who's been out of hurling for club and county for the last three years. Timmy McCarthy makes way for Brian Corcoran. It's great to see him back, Marty. One of the great, greatest hurlers over the last 10, 15 years. And, you know, he retired at 27 or 8 years of age, having, having played football as well. But hurling needs players like Brian Corcoran, an absolute gentleman, a fantastic hurler. It's great to see him back. Brian Corcoran goes into the new position for him, at least. Full forward. Centre back on the All-Ireland winning team of 1999. Tom Kenny. Good play. This is Jerry O'Connor. Floating this one in for his Joe Dean. Knocked away by TJ Ryan. This is Peter Lawler. With the assistance of Mickey Cahill. 
Parkman was being fouled, Ronan Cohen being pulled back, and that has to be a free for the Lee Siders. 14th free of the match for Cork. A little bit of unnecessary pushing and shoving and handbag stuff going on. And the referee having a word with the Limerick man. Yeah, the ref is more decisive there. You know, in the first half, he was letting a few things go. Yellow card for Sean O'Connor. All a bit unnecessary, really. John O'Grady, much more... Uh, Happy now, I'd say, with this second half performance. His team now enjoying a six point advantage. A goal by Ben O'Connor after six minutes certainly transformed this match. Yeah, but in fairness to Limerick, they're battling away. They're still six points down. They need a score too quickly if they're going to win the game, but at least they're still putting in the effort. I think that's a stra very strange move. Taking off John Paul Sh Shane and leaving on, you know, maybe Andrew Shockley is not having a good day. Pat Tobin introduced for John Paul Sheehan. This testing ball for the Limerick defence. It falls for Joe Dane. TJ Ryan comes forward. Ali Moore has to go back down to his full back line to try and make sure the court don't add to their tally. Fine play by Ronan Carr. Brian Corkwell on his knees. This will be glorious. This is glorious. Corcoran has returned to the championship. On his knees he scored. Just watch this. This is magic. Gathered it the first time, didn't get off the ground, and floated this beautifully over the crossbar. Christy O'Connor Senior in golf have recorded that. What a score. How can Limerick respond to that now? Andrew Shotlison. Chasing after him, Brian Murphy. John Garden back there, so prominent now since that switch was made from midfield to half back. Ali Morn comes from his own half back line, hits it well. This one dropping in. Don Cusick obviously calls for it. Good intelligent play out to his right half back now. John Gardner. Limerick now just look a little bit exposed. There's a chance, Jonathan Callahan. Good work again by Mickey Kyle. Not once, but twice. Cleared out over the line. Line ball for Cork. Well, they'll be talking about Brian Corcoran's point for a long time, right throughout the summer. Sean Ogo helping. Cuts it in well. Corcoran connects. Albert Shanahan gathers. Gets a clearance down for us, Clem Smith. Nipping in, Mickey O'Connell. Back outside towards Brian Corcoran. Has the time to look around, but good defending by Clem Smith on this occasion. Lays it off to Mickey Cahill. Good play by the left corner back. Being chased by Jonathan O'Callaghan. Brian Geary. Floating this one in. There's Andrew Shocknessy. Getting no change whatsoever out of Brian Murphy. A shock to see again. Line ball for Cork. Great defending by Cork, it must be said. Yeah, it's just one of those days for Andrew Shock There's so much expected of him, and it's just not happening for him today. But I think they'll be doing, you know, maybe doing a favour by bringing on a sub now at this stage for him. The credit as well, Brian Murphy from Pride Rovers uh, made a name for himself at the under-21 level when he marked Owen Kelly of Tipperary. Here's a chance for Limerick. This one is going over the crossbar. Good response by Pat Tobin. Good play here by Limerick. Tobin getting into a good position. Availed of the space. Took his point well. Ball aimed again at John Gardner. Ronan Curran. Nice control. Didn't quite come up for Ben O'Connor. And the free is given to Mickey Cahill. 
Scoring chances here for Limerick, 9 out of 25. Wow. Such a feature of the Cork game where the short took out some Donald Cusack and you need a special type of goalie to carry that off. You know, he's playing 50, 60 yard passes straight into the hand. A lot, most goalies wouldn't be able to, they wouldn't have the confidence to do it. Peter Lawler is free. Hefty pull by O'Shaughnessy. Here's a chance. Kyle Moran sends it over the bar. But Brian Murphy picked up a nasty injury there. And I'm not too sure if that isn't a booking, at least a minimum of a booking offence on the Limerick men. There's the pull there. And Andrew Shocknessy could well be sent off for that. I don't think he's even going to be spoken to. I don't Martin. think so either. That was a very dangerous pull. Minimum should have been a yellow card. That should have been no, a red card. In pull, fact. pull very, very low there. Pull very low. Brian, Brian Murphy stepped in in front of it, but still, I don't know. Was he, he definitely wasn't pulling on the ball there. And Brian Murphy has recovered, takes his position of right cornerback. Cork have possession once more. Look at this, Mickey O'Connell in space. Has the time and has the accuracy. It's his first point in this semi-final. But with 10 minutes still to go, you'd have to say that Cork now look as if they're heading for the Munster hurling final. Peter Lawler backing with Jonathan O'Callaghan. This is Clem Smith. Timur O'Sullivan gets there ahead of Dunica Sheehan. Kieran's not a great one. John Gardner pulled in it, goes off Niall Moran, that's going to be a cork ball. John Gardner, noted footballer as well. Scored five points last year in a club match for Napiersig against Nemo. A jewel star with his club. Peter Lawler sends it into the middle. There's a little bit of space here for Niall Moran. Steadies himself and shoots a very good point. Six points for Niall Moran. And credit to Limerick, Martin. You know, a soft goal went in, a lot of teams would have dropped their heads, but they've kept battling and battling away. They don't look like maybe they're going to score enough to win the game. They certainly, you know, they have to be credited with keeping up the effort. Five points between the teams again. Fabulous catch by Ollie Moore to his brother Niall. Limerick show their battling skills. Wayne Sherlock, master of that uh, left corner area, but his distribution is very poor here. Niall Moore again sending this one in. Jim O'Sullivan has the better of uh, Dunnick Sheehan. And Limerick lacking a bit of physique up in that full forward line now. Ali Bourne covering an awful lot of ground in the Limerick half-back line. Niall Morton again, knocked away from him by John Gardner. This is Joe Dean, has various options. One of them is to feed Niall McCarthy. McCarthy cutting through the centre, met by a fair shoulder from Peter Lawler. Tim Smith combining as well as McCarthy, despite the fact that he was falling, doing an almost by Corcoran and sending that over the bar. Yeah, I'd agree with you there, Marty, about the physique and the full forward. And that's why I find it very strange to took off John Paul Sheen. I thought he was playing well. He was out in front of Dermot O'Sullivan. He was breaking the ball and he had scored a good point. So, could, you know, they've left a small man in there now in Dermot O'Sullivan and that's not what you need in there. And Limerick need to feed the ball low. That's a high challenge in Joe Dean by Damian Rail. And this time I'm sure the right corner back is going to be shown a yellow card. Yellow card for the number two. No doubt about the uh, validity of the decision by the referee. Well, when Cork are moving and moving the ball well, they play a very, very attractive brand of hurling. There's no doubt about it. Like effortlessly, they've clocked up 116 and they look to be maybe only in second gear. Mm. I think their biggest concern today will be their inability to win ball in the air and the half forward line. Every 50 50 ball, practically from the start of the game, has been won by the Limerick half back line. There's the statistical information for you, Cork, with 52%, Limerick 48. And they increase their tally by yet another point. Yeah. 
Seven points now between the teams. Ben O'Connor adding to his tally of uh, goal and five. He now has scored a goal and six. Mark introduce another substitute. This is uh, Michael Byrne from Killa. And the player that's going off is Jonathan O'Callaghan. John Gardner. That's well wide. But Limerick certainly in the last five minutes seem to have lost their shape, particularly in the full forward line. I can't see Dunica Sheehan uh, winning a high ball with Dermot O'Sullivan, so they need to rearrange themselves. Ball sent in low. Andrew Shocknessy having a right tussle with Brian Murphy. This is Wayne Sherlock that delivers the clearance. Peter Lawler back to Clem Smith. Lawler can't keep it in. Line ball for Cork. Things not going well for Pacho Wheelahan at the moment. Certainly that goal seemed to transform the game. And the tactical switches by Cork as well, as we mentioned earlier uh, in the second half. John Gardner has uh, picked up what seems to be a hand injury. John Gardner was part of the Cork uh, team that lost the All-Ireland minor final to Galway in 2001. The team captained, in fact, by Tomas O'Leary, Sean O'Leary, the Cork selectors uh, saw. Mickey O'Connell driving this in. Mickey Cahill, who has been quite consistent and impressive with left corner back. Andrew Shocknessy has switched corners, but bringing him, bringing, marking him is Brian Murphy as always. This is O'Shocknessy. Sean Ogo Halting laying it off inside. Here's a chance for Sean O'Connor. It's his second goal of the afternoon. Maybe this game isn't over after all. It was O'Shaughnessy, this is what we were expecting him to do. He drew three players, Fed O'Connor and Donald Cusick hardly saw it. Exactly, Andrew O'Shaughnessy did the simple thing there. Carried the ball, laid it off in each other. Earlier in the game, he wasted possession two or three times by overplaying it. Now, this surely will boost Limerick. Cork have to consolidate their position now. As Limerick come at him again, here's O'Shaughnessy laying it back for his Mike McKenna. Switching the direction of the play. Over towards this side, chasing after it, is the one of the substitutes, Pat Tobin. Scored a point earlier. With him, Wayne Sherlock. Superb defender, this lad. Really impressive. Did well. Never panicked, never fouled. Holly Moran, there was a frontal charge on the right half back. And that's going to be a free for Limbrick. This is the challenge of Morn as he went down. Donald O'Grady, Patch of Wheelahan. Anxious moments for both of them. This drops in. Give it O'Sullivan. Cleared by O'Shaughnessy. Rebounded off a court defender. Limerick have it once more. Chance here of a point. Pat Tobin sends it over the bar for his second point. Limerick aren't going to go down without a fight. It's one thing about him right throughout the game, I said it earlier, is that the, the, the spirit seems to be very good within the squad. They're trying very, very hard, giving it 100%. Two points between the teams. Two minutes left in the Munster Championship semi-final. Cork, midway through the second half, seem to be sailing their way to that date on the 27th of June in the Munster Hurling final. But Limerick are showing their battling skills and their character. We questioned it after Ben O'Connor scored that rather surprising goal. Dermot O'Sullivan. On his own, with the head now of Wayne Sherlock. Comes back to Niall Morn, floating this one in, but it's a waste of possession. And Niall Morn, more than anybody else, recognises that fact. Don Low Cusick with no rush whatsoever. Puck out is aimed at Mickey O'Connell. The marking quite poor here by Limerick. Down for us, Tom Kenny. Not a great ball in. TJ Ryan snapped up by Brian Corcoran. 
Trying to lay it back for as Jodine. Plenty of Limerick defenders around. It's Ryan again. Leading by example. Four for Clares around him. And the free is given against him for overcarrying. Well, that is a bit harsh. Well, we count the steps now in a minute, but uh, there's absolutely... It looked to me there was no way it was a free. Now he's bringing it in 10 yards. Well, this is TJ Ryan coming forward. Survive one shoulder here, trying to piss no, it up. No, no way, no, no way. way. Ju just on his fourth step there, absolutely yeah. no way. Yeah. And Limerick have been pulled a couple of times harshly, I feel, for, for things like that. Some statistical information. 50% for Cork, 50% for Limerick. And this is gone. Yes, the umpire has finally raised his flag. Another point for Ben O'Connor, who has now scored 1-7 but a very harsh decision by the referee and in our humble opinion, an incorrect one. Now, they have to score a goal to stay in the Munster Championship. It's Limerick, do or die. Pat over, score two points, two core players chasing after him. Wayne Sherlock holds possession with his foot. And once again, they all fall down. John Gardner somehow managed to get it. Cork have possession. Available is Mickey O'Connell drives it down into the Limerick half of the field Brian Corkwood half intercepted fully intercepted in fact by Mickey Cowell passing her forward far as Brian Geary into the space over to Andrew O'Shocknessy they need a goal this is O'Shocknessy three Cork players around him tries to set up Sean O'Connor going for a hat-trick floating this one in Kevin O'Sullivan it's there for Limerick Pat Tobin gets a shot half blocked there. Sean Ogo Halpin is there so too is Roman Corrid such a pulsating climax the referee has given the free to Cork a free out and Pat O'Wheelan will be bitterly disappointed with some final refereeing decisions that just didn't seem to go his way here Limerick had possession they had a chance great defending by Cork Getting behind the ball, Ronan Curran here, and the referee deemed that he was being fouled. Now, Patrick Wilhelm has certainly given this Limerick team an effusion uh, of uh, spirit and determination. As Limerick fans look at the clock, we're into injury time now, and time seems to be against. Uh, these supporters as Cork supporters decide they better start heading for Mallow and uh, heading towards Cork and get away but uh, it looks like as if Limerick have put up a spirited performance this will delay injury time it's by no means over here but Limerick have to create an opportunity and they have to get a goal Donald O'Grady down with his Defenders trying to make sure that they calm matters down now. The free to Cork going to be taken by Dermot O'Sullivan on his own 20 meter line. Two and a half minutes, more than two and a half minutes of injury time now played. It's now at the discretion of the referee. Ball goes all the way for his Brian Corcoran. Albert Shanahan calls and clears. Mark Foley. They have to try and retain possession and they have to try and create space. Crossfield ball aimed at Pat Tobin. Pushed out over the sideline and that's going to be a free for Cork. For a free for Limerick rather. It's the 11th free of the afternoon for Limerick. And they have to try and lob this in and Limerick have to get a connection. One goal between take, the teams. Take it quickly there. They send it over as far as Mike McKenna. And Mike McKenna sends it over the bar. Yes, the umpires agree. It's his first point. But I think they really needed to create a goal. I don't know, Marty. They're four points down before that point. So they needed two scores anyway. So I would have taken my point there from the free and hoped that you get one more chance then for the goal. Limerick are lacking a bit of penetration to forwards. You feel if they one or two more forwards, maybe with some of those lads that have gone on the, off to the football panel, they'd have a serious outfit. The six backs have played very well. Three for Peter Lawler. 118, a total of 21 points. 212, a total of 18 points. 74 minutes played. A few metres gained by Ollie Moore and is punished by the referee and told to go back. That's Donald O'Grady can hardly wait 
for that final whistle. Everybody up from the Limerick point of view. The referee blows the full-time whistle. And Cork are in the Munster hurling final. They had a real battle here in Parkner Vale. Limerick, who have certainly experienced managerial change over the last 12 years with four different managers, but certainly Pat Wheelahan has given Limerick new life and new spirit. But it is Cork who deservedly go through to the Munster hurling final. Full-time score, Cork 118, Limerick 212. The referee, Seamus Roach, being escorted off the pitch by the Gardaí as Limerick officials are furious with some of his decisions towards the end. Let's get on to the sideline for some post-match reaction. And join Tony O'Donoghue. Thanks very much indeed, Marty. Donald O'Grady joins me. Mission accomplished, Donald, but it was tough for you. Well, it was always going to be tough, Tony. You know, um, the exact same thing happened in both halves where, you know, we were coasting along. We, in the first half, you know, we, we came back after they got a goal and, you know, we were doing nicely and we left them back into the game. And I think most people thought they were 10 minutes ago. The game had dropped, the pace had dropped, and suddenly Limerick had another goal and uh, we're on the back foot from then on and we're trying to claw the victory, you know. But, um, you know, the, the, the performance that we had today, like, would not do against either Tip or Waterford in, in the Munster final. It's as simple as that. The switches you made through that second half, uh, Kenny and Gardner, seemed to help things along for you. Well, it did, it did to an extent, but I mean, as I said, we, we went very well the first quarter of an hour after the second half, and then we sort of sat down again, you know, but that could be just a problem with maybe fitness or just a problem with me people thinking maybe yeah, it's all over, we're going into a six or seven point lead, you know, but, um, you know, you, 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 can't, you can't turn around and leave a, leave a crowd, come back from six or seven points down to within, you know, three points at the end, and we are hanging on for victory. The referee got a, quite a reception from the home crowd there as he was taken off. How did you feel he did? Well, I think th I think he did well enough. You know, he kept good control. You know, I mean, I'll have cribs that he didn't give us freeze here, and Limerick probably have cribs that didn't get freeze there. But I think all in all, it was balanced out. I didn't see him favouring any side. Thanks very much indeed. Tony, thank you. So the crowds begin to stream out of the Gaelic grounds here in Limerick after watching a fine game of hurling. Disappointment, obviously, for Limerick, but. Cork came here to do a job and they did it certainly in the second half there's no question at all about that with me here in the studio we have Cyril Farrell and Gerlach and gentlemen first of all good game of hurling good exciting stuff all the way through terrific stuff and I uh, know in the second half it, it, it lagged a small bit for the first 20 minutes or so I suppose Michael had it short above all an inexperienced team in Limerick you know it, that was that, it was inexperienced leading to a lack of work rate a little bit of confusion at times and especially in that crucial first 20 minutes of the second half if you're an experienced team the vital time is the 20 minutes after half time you must put on the pressure then now instead of that it was caught put on the pressure they drew a point to hit two three four and next thing on comes this goal which really nearly yeah. finished the game yeah. but to give Limerick their due they fought back right to the very end and a few decisions by the referee i know they'll be very unhappy with the referee but they shouldn't blame him only it was a terrific game, a massive step forward by Limerick. That's where they should take it and build from here. In an overview of a Cyril Farrell, Cork deserved their win because they play, played over the 17 minutes, I suppose, the better hurting into their head in the scoreboard. But as Ger said, uh, the referee got a hell of a booing from the Limerick crowd going off here. Yeah, well, you're going to get that if you let things like that go in a Munster Championship game. Cork deserved to win. I had a feeling that they'd attack on a few points, and they did. And then the soft goal put them in the driving seat. And they laid off again. Donald O'Grady even said that there in his interview, like, they kind of lost their shape for a while and didn't fight that much for, for a lot of possession. But, like, at the end of the day, like, the best team won. They brought on Brian Corcoran in the second half. He's with 20, I don't know who, right now. Thanks, Michael. We're with Brian Corcoran. Welcome back to Championship Hurling, Brian. Thanks, Jimenez. It's good to be back. What did you think of uh, Cork's performance today? They'll have to be a bit better, according to Donald O'Grady, if they're to win the Munster final. Oh, yeah, but we knew it was going to be tough coming up here today. I mean, Limerick are a tough side. They got, they got a bit of uh, bad press during the week. You know, the, the pitch was tight. And uh, it was always going to be tough, we knew that, but, you know, a win is a win, and we're going to have to improve for the next day, whether it's Waterford, Tipperary, it's going to be a hell of a tough game. Thanks for joining us, Brian. Well done. Yeah, I often think it's tougher doing the interviews after the match than it is out there in the pitch for 70 minutes or whatever amount of time you're on. Brian Corcoran, obviously, a very popular man, a hero with the Cork supporters. OK, we're going to take a break here from Limerick for a few minutes as the crowd continue to stream home. It's going to take us all a little while to get out of the Gaelic grounds here this evening, I think. However, you don't go anywhere because there's lots happening in Gaelic games around the country this afternoon. News on all of that coming up in Sunday Game Plus.
half. And just like Limerick got the tonic goal in the first half, they got the tonic goal in the second half. Yeah, and uh, the irony of the whole thing was that, that before Ben O'Connor took the free, the crowd were put it forward about a foot or two. The ref moved him back a foot or two, so he took his time. He's very, very experienced. Now, Ben went for a point. He's a very good free taker. Dro ball dropped short. I would say Albert Shannon lost sight of the ball in the, the sun, turbo big sunder near yeah. the cap on, and you can see it goes go straight in. Just watch his hand. The ball comes in. Goes right in and in Talbot. Look at his hand. He just, he just even, doesn't even touch it. To it. Yeah. yeah. So like that puts look, it puts Cork in kind of cruise control. Now if it was hit, if it was stuck properly to be over the bar, but this put them two or three points up. And like after that, Limerick were chasing the game. And as you say, uh, so before he took the free, it was inside the 65. The Limerick crowd got on him. The referee forced him back another seven or eight yards. <laughs> he takes the free from there. If he hits it inside the 65, it was over the bar. Yeah. That's the luck. That's the wins you want the championship matches. Absolutely. That's the tournament's game. The, yeah. law, the law of the jungle. You need them yeah. breaks. Yeah. But the funny thing is, Michael, when you're coming from, say, the bottom, as Limerick are at the moment, them breaks seem to come against you. Like, and as Jerry said, they can take great heart from the display they played today, mm. but they have to realise they wouldn't want to be blaming the ref fully because it's easy to blame the ref. I think they'd have to look at their hole in themselves. Absolutely, there's no doubt about that. I was fascinated by the fact that when they were went a few points up, then four or five points up, I think it was, don't look great, he'd throw on Brian Corcoran. And the purpose here was to give it all another G. They needed just another little That's shot right. at that well, stage. It shows you how worried Don, Don O'Grady was as well by Limerick's, by Limerick's challenge. Even though yeah. when there were four or five points ahead, he still wasn't sure that they were going to win the game. So yeah. he felt that they needed another little jolt, another little lift. And of course, and just for a bonus, Cork, then Cork get the no, point. When he yeah. comes on, then down, down in his feet. Oh, is that a dream come back? How, how, how much better does it get in that? Catches the ball, falls, looks up on his knees and puts it over the bar. Bus. I don't think they should read too much into that. That was a, that was a spectacular yeah. fight itself. Brian was a bit off the pace. His striking wasn't the very, very best. But at least he has one Monster Championship under his belt. And he has now three or four weeks to prepare for the Monster Final. So he is a big option for them at full forward because Joe Dean worked much better in the corner than he did at full. They need a target man at full forward. It's not all plain sailing for Cork for this. They'll be just satisfied to have got out of this game. It was always a tricky assignment. Limerick will have got a lot out of it as well, but Limerick shouldn't fool themselves, as several says, by blaming the referee. They should watch that 20 minutes after half time. You know, when you're with an inexperienced team, that's the time you focus on. And I think, you know, even the management will have to look at themselves and the vibes that were given out before this game, no one gives us a chance. That's very bad. You should be positive. You should be saying, no matter if we go down five or six points, I, think, I, I still think we'll beat Cork. The That's the kind of attitude that gets rid of that 20-minute lapse yeah. at the start of the second half. Yeah, that was their downfall really in this match, Sir Far. that flat period that, yeah. as Jarrah said, they went into. And the thing about it is, if they had continued to believe themselves, they got the goal towards the end of the match, they were back to three points at one stage. Anything could have happened. Yeah, well, you see, that will happen again when you're coming from the bottom. And you have to praise Sean O'Connor. He got two fantastic goals. Like, here you can see it again. Now. This, 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 this young yeah. shot, this is going through. Like, he had a tough old game, not the goal right, but he kept and stuck at it. He really made this score. What's his little flick across here? Now, he has a lot to do, but he sticks it in the top of the net. Nothing going wrong can do about that. Like, it's a fantastic goal. Now, it was a few scores before this. Look at him coming through here again. He kept fighting for a little hand flick here. Lovely catch. Now, that's a good strike. He still has a good bit to do here, but, like, into the top corner of the net. If Limerick had to get the point or two before this, or stop Cork from getting one or two, that the kind of soft ones, they were still in that game. And even Jerry remarked, like the, some of them were leaving the, the ground. When that goal went in, they stopped and they came back again. You need belief in this game, and like they have to learn that. Yeah, that's all about Limerick, and definitely there's work to be done there, work that can be done. They could be a good team, but Cork are the Monster Champions. They've come here today for a difficult assignment. They've won the game. A lot of people fancied them this year for the All-Ireland. What did you think of them today? I, I, I tell you, Mike, they were better than I thought. At, at their best, they were better than I thought they would be. Yeah. You know, they didn't miss the tent as much as I thought they would have made. Jonathan O'Callaghan had a great first half. Now, he took a few very heavy knocks. He's a very slight fella. His first Monster Championship game. And he went out of it in the second half and they replaced him. But I th the defence is absolutely magnificent. If, if Damon O'Sullivan just steadied up that little bit more, if he wasn't just uh, but then uh, he wouldn't be gung he wouldn't be the other <laughs> yeah, jab. He wasn't kind of even the He's catch like button. yourself, Chair, now when you were playing. Well, there is a lot to be said for gung-ho players, <laughs> <there is, laughs> <there is, laughs> <there is, laughs> yeah. but provided that you keep your head... But generally the defence did... I thought Wayne Sherlock and Brian Murphy were fantastic, and the half-back line was immaculate. They are a great defence, and they're not going to give away big scores to any forward line in the country, maybe Barclay Kenny. Their midfield, the big switch of the day, of course, was yeah. putting Garner wrapping back and, jo and Tom Kenny midfield. Yeah, you said that, that changed, time, yeah. yeah, that changed the whole game. Garner was so comfortable at wing back, even though he's a bit loose at times. Kenny played much better at midfield. I still think they need a partner for Kenny at midfield. Mm -hmm. And their half forward line is the one area they have to look at. If they started winning ball in that half forward line regularly and supplying the full forward line, they'd be really dangerous. Ger, Cyril, thank you very much for your thoughts this afternoon. That indeed wraps up this afternoon's Monster Hurling semi-final from the Gaelic Grounds in Limerick. But we're not leaving you for another while yet. 
After the break, Bernard Flynn will be here with us as we look back at today's football championship matches from around the country. It was a game where there could have been ambush today. The first game since really the All-Ireland final of last year. They expected to do well this year in the championship. Limerick won't be too disappointed either. They wanted a response. They wanted to top their game. They wanted to show they had spirit. Cork controlled the game on two occasions. Limerick fought all the way to the end. That's one of the, one of the better points they'll take out of it. And it kept the crowd there until the last minute of the game. So all in all, the right team won and it was a good contest. Larry, you were particularly impressed by Cork's defensive play and you've picked out a few clips for us to watch them. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, when Limerick were actually putting pressure on the Cork, on the Cork uh, defence, like I mean, you know, we had the likes of Dermot O'Sullivan who came in, who made a fantastic block. A uh, ball got picked up by Santano had been driven 90 yards up the field. Then we had a uh, John Gardner chasing back. We had Brian Murray coming back in. And he was chasing, blocking, hooking, chasing, never giving up. Over carried the ball, ball up the field 90 yards. We had Wayne Sherlock coming in, a great hooked him by Wayne Sherlock. In he comes. Bit of a tussle, bit of a hassle, ball come in, bang, 90 yards up the field again. So it was great defending all together by Clare. Here we have Dermot O'Sullivan coming in, he's hooking, blocking, chasing, Haston. We have our own Kern coming back in from centre back, driving the ball 90, 70, 80, 90 yards up the field again. And also a great block here by uh, the uh, corner back, a fantastic block. Defenders all around coming in, smothering the ball. Dermot O'Sullivan comes in, hooks the ball out to the side, lifts her up, and bang, ball gone up the field. So great defending by Cork overall. Blanket defence, I think you've got that in football. Pete, what positive can Limerick take out of today's game? I think can take a lot of positives out of it. Um, last few seasons has been bad for Limerick. We all know there's plenty of underage talent. Uh, they went through a transition where half the lads decided they were going to play football. And if any team, even take Cork, uh, the lost uh, Satanta and Brown earlier on this year, they're back now with a man that hasn't played for three years. So every county doesn't have that much of a talent available. Limerick have done well. Uh, they have a team put together. Paja Wheel had only five months. As I said earlier, the encouraging thing was that they fought all the way to the, way to the end. They have a structure of a team now to go forward in, into the round-robin bases. And they, they will improve. They will improve. Lads, we had a lot of callers ringing the office this afternoon, this after the game, in relation to the performance of the referee Seamus Roach. And you've looked at the main talking points, and uh, how did he assess his performance? Uh, his performance, here's one of the more controversial ones. Ryan this is the one where TJ Ryan, um, people say, should he be sent off, should he not be sent off? Here we see the two, the two of them have a go at one another. John McCallan gives them a push, TJ gave them a drive back. When you see it in slow motion, it looks a lot worse than it actually is. TJ was caught out, he came back here. Uh, Jonathan O'Callaghan gives him a drive there. TJ turns Larry, around what you make of and it? he gives him a, a worse drive. Well, to be quite honest, now Pat, I thought he should have got the line. Uh, it was a high challenge, a, a strike of the hurl up in the face. And in this situation here, Andrew it was Andrew O'Shockles, yes. And it was actually that Brian Murphy actually came in from the blind side and he actually pulled. But I think Brian Murphy actually left a little bit late coming in. He, uh, as I say, he was caught blind sided or whatever and striking. And then well. another instance with TJ Ryan coming out of the fence, lads? Ah, yeah, TJ, that, that, that's a mistake by the referee, there's no question about it. Um, he plays the ball here when he bursts out, and he takes, he plays the ball, puts it in his hand, one, two, three, and he's passed it on his fourth step. Now, that was at a crucial time in the game, only a few minutes left, and Cork were only, uh, Cork was three points up. That put them four points up, which really sealed the game for them. But we can complain about the referee and say this, that, and the other about him. Um, but the is there a feeling, lads, that ref football refs are refereeing it much stricter than hurling refs? You don't get too many players sent off. You nearly need to have a head rolling on the well, ground. I, 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 hate, I hate to see, play football because I saw an incident there earlier on tonight in, in one of the games where a young Antrim player um, he got pulled for something that he actually didn't do at all. His name was taken, so he had to be cautious for the rest of the game. Hurling is fine, there's nothing wrong with it. I don't think there was uh, maybe one player sent off last year in it. It's not a dirty game. We don't have major um, injuries in it, so leave it alone. If you want to play <laughs> football and tidy it up, you can, but leave Hurling alone, please. And James Roach had a good game, in my opinion. A quick word about next week. Tip Watford, Larry? Yeah, it should be a cracker, you know, uh, neighbours. It'll be fired up for it. Both sides will be fired up for it. You're um, not right enough Watford by any chance, just Oh, no, 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 no I tell you. Watford just had a great win over Clare now. You know, they have to get back to the basics again and, and study uh, the, the performance of, of what, what they have ahead of them. Tipperary be a great game altogether, you know. So I might, I might fancy Tipperary might just scrape through on it. Pete, contenders for man of the match today? Contenders for man of the match today, we had... Uh, John Gardner had a fine game um, when he moved back to half-back where he started his hurling. Um, up front for, for Cork, OK, Jerry O'Connor was, was, was handy enough, Bin was handy enough. Um, for Limerick, in fairness, Niall Moran had, had a good game, as Ollie had at, at wing-back. But um, who was really he, only well, one man. Larry, who did he go for? Well, it was, it was a tough decision, but we decided on Wayne Sherlock. I thought he was outstanding in, in the full-back line. You know, even when Dermot O'Sullivan was struggling at times to, to cope with the full-forward, 
we had Wayne Sherlock who came into the game, cleared a lot of ball and did a lot of hassle, a lot of chase, a lot of blocking as well. Like you know, I thought overall I thought he had an outstanding game. Deserving man of the match. Deserving man of the match. Without well, the match. after the game, our reporter Matthew Morrissey caught up with this afternoon's man of the match winner, Cox number four, Wayne Sherlock. Yeah, it was tough. It was everything that we expected. You know, like we won by I think it was three points in the end of it, and like we would take, we would have taken a point victory in the end. You know, like I suppose Limerick would have taken a point as well. But uh, it was everything we expected and a bit more. You know, we knew Limerick were coming. You know, they were they're probably coming for the last couple of years. You know, we expected a big, big fight from today, and they gave it to us. And we luckily enough we held off in the end. We sat down at half time. We had a small bit of a chat. Like we we knew we were still in the game. We kind of kind of had a small bit of a breeze with us. So like we knew everything was to play for, and we were happy with half time. Well, you're in the monster final. You must be looking forward to it. Yeah, I think it's the end of June. You know, um, people probably didn't expect us to be the ones to win. You know, we we know that. Like we we had a good league campaign, and well, what's putting the league campaign behind us? You no, know, we trained hard, club back. You know, next week, and then we'll have another three weeks to months to win, which everyone's looking forward to. Well, after a disappointing run in the league, awfully we're hoping.